So how's it going, everybody? If you guys want to guess what hotel property I'm in, you can take a look, take a guess. It's a, it's an iconic old property that I have a lot of love for, and I think it's a great property, but most people miss it. It's right beside the newest property in the entire strip, and I just gave it away, so you guys know exactly where it is. Welcome to Sundays with Stephen. I'm Stephen, and we're going to be walking in an area that has more crime than, well, I mean, let me put it this way. In the last two week period, there have been 69 crimes reported in 89109. That is the, that is the, the kind of the thick of the tourist area. That, that's the Bellagio, that's the Wynn, that's the Encore, that's Caesars, everything. But in this area I'm going to, there were 23 crimes. Almost half the amount of crimes that happened in the strip area occurred in this zip code. This is a weird area. This is uh, encompassing the stratosphere, Naked City, areas off the, right off the beaten drag. And I thought I would, uh, you know, come down here and show you this so you guys can get a look at it in the daytime so you can make a decision whether or not you wander around in the nighttime. So thanks for watching the stream. I'm waiting for some people to get into the chat so we can get going. It almost looks like I have a green screen on me, but I totally don't. That's just because we have the slot machine in front of me. This is sitting on the slot and uh, it's got a weird effect to it. But yeah, we're really in the property right now and uh, we're really waiting for some people to come into the chat. So hopefully we see some people soon. Did I even put this on live? I bet you I did. Yeah, it's totally public. But anyways, it's, uh, it's uh, Sundays with Steven and I don't see any chats. So that makes it difficult to do anything. But uh, yeah, 86 people in the chats now. Perfect. Some people are coming in. That's fantastic. That is very good. It does look like a green screen, but it's totally not a green screen. And uh, we can actually, how do I, yeah, so we can see. That's not a green screen. It'd be the world's largest green screen. Sound is not working, Marlene says. I, I sound is working? The sound is working? Somebody put in the chat if the sound is not working. Because I have an audio meter and I see that it's bouncing. Good morning, Stephen. What casino are you at? So we're at the Sahara right now where parking is always so, so juicy and free for everybody, which is very nice and um, iconic property. It's been around for a million years. I took this photo from uh, the top of the stratosphere here. I'm gonna have to add some media anyways because I wanna show you guys some crime statistics. So we're gonna show you these two, three, and then four. We're gonna add these to the media bucket. I actually took this photo from up on the top today. That is the view from the top of the parking garage. That was supposed to be an arena called the Allnet Arena, which never came to pass, unfortunately. Uh, but um, Jackie Robinson, I know it's his name. I know it sounds like a, base, a baseball player. It's not. Uh, he was a UNLV alum, and he had a dream to build a giant entertainment complex here. Uh, in this site that you're looking at right now with uh, movie theaters, bowling alleys, uh, and uh, retail spaces, and also a 21,000 seat enclosed basketball arena to hopefully court a basketball team to Vegas. Now, that never happened. Part of that is going to be owing to the fact that there's a giant company that does stadiums all across the company, the country building something on Blue Diamond Road. So, you know, when you have somebody who has lots of money versus somebody who has a dream, the financing and the funding never happened for all men. It's just unfortunate. So we have 139 people watching right now. So let's take a look at some stuff here, okay? So this is the strip, okay? First of all, you know, we have to start off with all of Las Vegas because uh, if we don't start off with all of Las Vegas, that's not the all of Las Vegas one. So here's all of Vegas for the entire city. I mean, this is Clark County in general, all the zip codes, right? And you can see that there were 920 pop property crimes 514 crimes against people, but that encompasses the entire area of Las Vegas for all the area what Metro Watch commands. And then we go to the next one, which would be um, the Strip, which is right here. So this is mainly the Strip. We can see that of the Strip, just under 10% of those crimes actually happen in, uh, in and around the Strip. So the Strip isn't as bad as people think it is. 69 property crimes, 35 crimes against people. Crimes against society are things like con men and things like that. That's what they determine it. But then we have this area that we're in right now. And this area, like I mentioned, is kind of weird. So we have 23 property crimes, whereas the whole entire strip that encompasses all of those different properties, uh, they had a 69. Uh, I'm a 12 year old boy in my head. So we can see that this part that we're on right now had 23 property crimes and 
nearly all of them are crimes against people and crimes against society. So these are going to be robberies, thefts, burglaries, um, the R word, uh, assaults, things such as this matter. So that's what we're looking at. This statistics come from the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Uh, they post up bi-weekly stats. So let's go take a look. So glad to see, to be here. It's been a, so long since I have seen a live stream. I've been quite busy on my live streams. So you are, are, are updated and that you're notified of when I'm doing videos because I have been doing them quite frequently. We're inside the Sahara right now and I was surprised that my signal worked okay in here. So yeah, a lot of this stuff we're going to go off and behind these properties a little bit. Now you can see where the Fountain Blue found themselves in and the predicament they found themselves in. Um, not a lot of foot traffic and if there is any locals coming in, they're not exactly coming to the Fountain Blue for their Gucci stores and their $150, $150, not $15, $150 Peking Ducks. How many of those were Steve Wynn? I know all of them. All of them. Steve Wynn is on a monstrous rampage. I saw an article about Steve Wynn uh, that he was going to make the first $100 million home sale at a little resort town in Colorado happen. Kevin Burgess. Hey, Kevin, I got a thing for you. I'm doing a doing a drawing I need to send you. It's a work in progress and I'm not to share it until it's pretty much finished. <laughs> so we know where MJ Live ended up. MJ Live ended up at the Sahara now that the uh, Tropicana closed. So that's pretty cool. I mean, that is a dead ringer. If I showed you that picture, would you not think that's Michael Jackson flat out? Uh, hey, Steven, I thought East Harmon was the most dangerous just off the strip area. There's one little pocket on East Harmon that, yes, you got to be careful for. A lot of it's been changed now because they have the flashy F1 stuff on there. They used to have just a broken down nightclub that squatters could go into called Ice, which was around for a long time until it wasn't. But this is iconic. And, you know, this just this property here, what this shows me is that you don't need to tear everything down in Vegas. Because if, if, if you saw this, you wouldn't know where you are. You would just think you're in a really cool strip casino property. And if I told you that this building opened in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010, 2000, if I told you this building is 65 to 70 years old, you probably wouldn't even believe it, would you? The area by Casino Royale has a lot of rough people loitering. That is true. And that would be like one of those spots that makes up that 69 person our crime statistic there so yeah and if you're moving to vegas just be forewarned like your realtor can't tell you any of that stuff it's against the law for a realtor to tell you the crime stats in an area because they could lie to you and fabricate some statistics to try to get you to come on down and buy a house so you have to look up those things <clears throat> fortunately it's easier than it's ever been the police department's finally putting up different maps and data which i just showed you all right welcome to sundays with steven we're in the sahara we're gonna exit the Sahara in a little bit. My signal's kind of taking a bit of a dip, so I don't want to lose it. Yeah, I bet a lot of the crime on the strip is just in a few select pockets. Hi, until there's... Sir. Hi, good. Uh, Sam Williams with security. Oh, would you Are like? Are you filming? I'm, I was just showing the not the gaming tables, the slot machines, and the seven. I'm just gonna leave right now. It's a live stream. It's not a it's not a recorded thing or nothing like that. Okay. If that's not okay, I, I'd rather respect your rules and I'll walk right out that front door. Okay. Um, unless you have prior approval. Okay, I'm glad I know. I'm glad I know. I just did a, I just did a video about this. Fountain Blue, they didn't treat me with the same respect you guys are doing. So I'm gonna point this at the floor and we'll walk out. Okay. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, sir. Okay. Well, we know the filming policy on the Sahara now, so we won't be able to, won't be able to show you much of this. But let's get out. Let's go back out to the strip. My signal seems to be uh, buckling under pressure, anyways. Okay. Cool. All right, come on camera, stop being a butthead. Come on signal, stop being a butthead. Whew. That's all right, man. That's not a policy for Stephen Campbell and not leaving Las Vegas. That's a policy for everybody. That's okay, that happens. Yeah, I mean, look, if any other YouTubers walked past the floor manager, head of security, they would have had the same situation. Let's get out here, though. Ah, oh, here we go. Beauty moss up here, man. Hopefully my network comes back soon. If it's just a little choppy for you, just know that that's nothing we can control here. It's 
All right. That happens. They were nice to me about it. Very respectful. He didn't know. That the gentleman didn't seem to understand what a live stream was when I told him I'm live streaming. He, you know, like the, he just completely, he had a befuddled look on his face. Like live stream, what's that? So I don't know, it's all good. We don't hate the player, we hate the game. It's all right, it's all right, baby. So yeah, this area up here, pretty cool little area though come down here in the day it's nice there's a big huge festival grounds across the way <laughs> don't, don't, <laughs> okay, nobody i'm gonna wager dollars to donuts another of you guys none, none of you guys actually had reservations at the sahara <laughs> why he was nice to me i mean is it a bummer sure would it have been nice to wander around in there and show you some of the cool artwork heck yeah but can we just operate within the realm of what the what the gods of the security say? Sure. That's okay. Man. All right, here's what I want y'all to do. If you guys are super fans, then email the casino. Tell them. <laughs> You're not gonna book a room anyways. But just tell them that. Let's see if we get a response, huh? Yes, I'm, I'm egging you on. <laughs> Go ahead, email the casino and tell them you're outraged. If you really are outraged or you're being sarcastic in the comments, I love you either way. And let's see if one of these properties actually reaches out to me. I think I was pretty, I was pretty darn respectful and he was pretty darn respectful. There's so much good in this city and wonderful events every single weekend. Nice. So go ahead guys, send them an email. <laughs> is completely free at the Sahara, which is pretty bomb. And that way down there, we're gonna go down there on a future Sundays with Steven. And uh, not today though, that's that's part of it. Oh, goodness. So we got the world's largest gift store here. The world's largest general store, Bonanza gift shop, souvenirs. We have the old uh, Ahern Hotel slash Lucky Dragon back there. This is a residential condo tower. There's supposed to be like three of these. right before the 2008-2009 uh, giant meltdown that we had. So the second the second one never got built. We're walking up the north end of the strip. Let's go to Naked City, yo. Let's go see what Naked City looks like. Look at this, if you haven't been up here recently. This is pretty slick. My wife and I were watching this, uh, The Laughing Lion. I like the Laughing Lion. Uh, did you ever tell you a story when I left, met the Laughing Lion? Does anybody know what that channel is? Say yes if you know the Laughing Lion channel. Tell me yes in the chat. Thanks for a subscription, by the way. If you know Laughing Lion, type yes in the chat. If you know Laughing Lion, type yes in the chat. If you live or poker knows Laughing Lion, say yes in the chat if you know him. I'll tell you a funny little anecdote about that. So uh, I, I met the Laughing Lion a couple of times actually. Um, we were down at the um, Virgin Hotel some years ago. The Virgin Hotel reached out to us and they said we're having a social media influencer weekend. We would like to offer you two nights at the property, have your feedback. I said, great. This is after they shut me down on their grand opening. I said, great, can I take video? They said, absolutely not. You cannot take video. I said, but I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> they said, well, so anyway, Laughing Lion met up with me. We were playing this uh, slot tournament they had us do. I, I took video of the room and I took some video around the property. I did a video on the Virgin Hotel. I like the property. I think it's good except for the neighborhood it's in. It can be rough after dark. And I met the Laughing Lion and he was so nice to me. He said, wow. You're that guy from the YouTube channel. I said, yeah. He goes, oh, I love your channel. I said, great. And then the rest of the day, he proceeded to call me Craig. Yeah, I just went with it. Yeah, I'm Craig from uh, just just arriving in Vegas. <laughs> Video channel. <laughs> it's funny. 
so they called me Craig. They, they put a pizza shop here in a daiquiri place. This used to be part of the, uh, the big, huge, world famous gift shop. What's up, Craig? That's okay, I've had that before. People walk up to me, Jacob! No, but uh, not Jacob. <laughs> Jacob is taller than me and has less hair than me. I was never a bouncer at Larry Flint's Hustler Club. And I don't think he does that anymore. He doesn't have to. He has a monstrously successful YouTube channel. Now I got people saying I'm hating. I'm not hating, I'm stating facts. <laughs> so who's gonna So who's gonna email the Sahara? Who's gonna email the Sahara? Tell me. Nobody, that's who. This is cookies, it's a dispensary over here on the strip. This used to be a tattoo parlor called Precious Slut. They have like six of them in town. But that's closed now. We had a really cool conversation with a, a young lady that did tattoos here. Now they're not here anymore. That's weird. Oh, okay. This is diversity tattoos. And yes, there were two tattoo parlors like quite literally right next to each other. Steven, any stories you can share about what is VPC? Where are we? We're just north of the Sahara. We're walking towards the stratosphere. Today we're gonna go back to Naked City. Uh, and I'm gonna get back in there. Oh, shucks, son of a gun. Heav heavens to Murgatroyd. I meant to download the thumbnail. If you're on, you should get on channel memberships today. I recommend $5 a month because I think it's worth it. I have channel memberships. And if you do, you get a video I did in a place yesterday right off the strip called International Marketplace. You know, 4K, 60 frames per second, a tour with me and the wife. Uh, she was on uh, doing some narration on it too. So you might consider channel memberships. I can't, it seems to be easier to get you to buy a channel membership and support us than to get you to go to Patreon. They also got the same video. So consider that. Oh, Vegas Polly. Why do I keep hearing about this dude? Vegas Polly. I keep hearing about Vegas Polly. And I don't know why you guys seem to think I should have an opinion on him. I'm gonna to have to check his channel out. I remember going to Odyssey Records right down the street here. It was awesome in the 90s. Is it still here? I don't know. So we have furnished studio apartments for rent over here. Back here, it gets weird because back here, everything is, um, everything is named after a, a city, I think it is. Let's go find out. Yeah, so tell me, why is, why is Vegas Poly seem to be somehow controversial with y'all? I'm interested to know. Abira's food truck, New York famous baby, the lobster shack. Scary old apartments by the stratosphere. Is the walk from the strip to Fremont doable? For me it is. For me it is. Is the IHOP closed? Yes, but then it moved right across the street and they built a brand new one, which is unfortunate because the original building for the IHOP that it was in, that we just walked and showed, is very old. So it'd be kind of cool if it wasn't so dilapidated and to keep the old building. So just randomly, this is kind of weird. Never really noticed this. Look at the sign here for the El Mirador Hotel. Like, Obviously, it doesn't exist anymore, but it's just kind of sitting there hanging out amongst this the big, huge loft condo behind it. And then behind that, we have obviously Resorts World and Fountain Blue and stuff like that. We're not, no, that's true. Head towards Lama Lot in Fremont here in an hour or two. Okay, cool, Mosh. I was on a deuce bus that got hit by a limo near the stratosphere. Ouch, man, those limo drivers. I always wonder if they like, you know, to get tips if they pop the celebrated celebratory champagne with their with their um clients because you know you go to like the strip club and the girls aren't <laughs> if you know this but the girls aren't drinking with you half of them you go to the strip club and you think you're drinking with a with a stripper and and they they got a deal where they're they're ordering what you think is a screwdriver in reality it's just orange juice because they're like i'm working honey i'm taking your money yo so how many eggs can I eat? I can eat a dozen eggs, boss. Yep, a dozen eggs. One dozen eggs. We're gonna walk down here behind all these properties and see what Naked City looks like. I came down here at night once, that was a stupid idea. I got real scared. 
Blue Moon Fox, students in Vegas, Russian Herd. Ah, we got our hype man in the channel. Beautiful day, beautiful morning. I had a dozen a day. I'm 6'1, 220. Man, eggs are good for you. Cholesterol myth is real. I'm not a doctor. Don't listen to me. But there's a book called The Cholesterol Myth. You might check it out. We got the stratosphere back here. I can't eat 50 eggs. <clears throat> so yeah, your body produces 3,500 milligrams of cholesterol every day on its own. You're telling me that your cholesterol intake from dietary foods is your concern. <sighs> so we were watching this stream last night. I don't know who it was. Oh, it was the laughing line. And, um, he talks on his streams, which is cool. He's not just observing a report, but he was going real slow. And I was telling my wife, I said, I think I walk too fast. And she said, that's true. You know, people love to see the, uh, people love to see the, um, the, the uh, details in the area. What's up, Extra Crispy? You look new here. Nice to see you. Subscribe if you haven't, folks. We're going into Naked City. It's called Naked City because back in the day, the showgirls were living near here. And they were topless showgirls in a lot of cases. And they would want to suntan. So they would suntan in Naked City on the top of their flat apartment complexes. Stuff that you're seeing out here. And uh, they would take their tops off. Hence the name, Naked City. Now it's probably an area where you wouldn't want to find yourself after dark. But there's a lot of low income housing and stuff. And low income folks heck i'm a low-income folk most days we're not bad but some people who are low-income become desperate which makes them do bad stuff why is it still lousy is what lionel brown is asking well i think the strip attracts a certain type of person uh to it to live near it to take advantage of folks every tourist town is like this it's no different no matter where you go so like, for example, you know, they say uh, Mexico City can be very dangerous. The U.S. government has a travel warning not to go to Mexico City if you're a U.S. citizen. And if you are, you better like watch yourself. So how do you, what do you do? You go to like El Centro in Mexico. I've never been to Mexico City. The closest I've been is Guadalajara. But if you go to El Centro downtown, there's touristy areas, right? Well, then you walk off the touristy areas. There's some bad dudes who are trying to take advantage of the tourists because they know they got some money. And so they live near that touristy area for easy access, you know what I'm saying? Check out the tunnels at night, Paul. I don't know, bro. Maybe you come with me and be strapped. And then we will check out the tunnels at night, my friend. Thanks for watching me today, this beautiful, gorgeous Sunday morning God gave us. Appreciate you guys. We're walking into Naked City. This used to be a 7-Eleven. This was closed in the last year or two. It's been a while since I've been down here, if I'm going to be totally candid with you. So the 7-Eleven is closed. It looks like they're they just boarded it up. I wonder what this will become. Love how the fences are just pushed in. How much are rents in these areas? I don't know. Anybody want to call the number? <laughs> Love the morning streams. Yeah, they, they get good traction. Hopefully we can push past 700 on this stream this morning. That would be cool. Get that car alarm at the uh, stratosphere going. So stratosphere has free parking. Sahara has free parking. Trade-off is you're a little further away than some stuff. Look at these old houses. See what I mean? This is a very old area of the strip. This house is probably 70 years old. Wow, these are identical. It's like the first version of tract housing in a way. <laughs> kind of wild. Tiny, for rent, one bedroom apartments. So what they did was this place, let's get across the street so this guy didn't run into us. But what they did with this place is they, they must have like portioned this off into little rooms. Look at that, one bedroom apartment, cable TV included. Whoa, that's weird to think that there's one bedroom apartments in here. I guess that's a different way of saying roommates. This whole area though is primed for just massive takeover, gentrification. Oh, look at that old car. Wow. Oh, my goodness. 
So we're right behind the zoo. You don't see the casinos are right there. So this is what they called when I was in Tahoe. They said, welcome to Tahoe. It's poverty with a view. <laughs> so, you know, this is a lot of towns. There was an old Saturday Night Live sketch with The Rock when I still found that Saturday Night Live funny. And he was like playing as a little Hawaiian ukulele player inside a restaurant. And he'd be singing to the guests at the table and they're loving it. Then he turned to the camera and break the fourth wall. Breaking the fourth wall is when you talk to the audience on a live stage show or like Family Guy talks to the audience. That's breaking the fourth wall in uh, entertainment. And he would be like, what you don't know is that I live with 12 people one mile off the main tourist drag. Some more rentals up here. <laughs> I want to show you something. Look at this sign. Can somebody type that in? <laughs> I'm not going to say those words. That is hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> Do not feed the blanks drugs. Mmm. Mmm. You're... <laughs> We're now in the thick of an era, different area. We got the strip back here, but we're in Naked City, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies. There's a library here in this community center. Community center is the nicest looking building in the whole area. Huh. <laughs> oh, there's a cat. Ming, ming. We call it, I don't know if it's a Filipino thing. My wife is from the Philippines. Just an alley cat, just doing its thing. It's killed something. Hey, take a look. The cat is eating. You gonna eat? Oh, don't come to me. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? Oh, no. No, he's not coming to me. What a weird day today is. What do I think of the 99 cent stores closing? I think that it, it's just a matter of inflation and their rents going up. They probably looked at their entire real estate portfolio and said, <laughs> we have 347 stores and we're not making much. So if we want to keep grinding out in existence, hoping our stocks go, I don't know if they're publicly traded, but they say, well, we could just cash out and you know sell these properties. But commercial real estate's in a mess. This is Bob Stupak Park. So Stupak, this is interesting, right? So if you don't know the history here, Bob Stupak Park. This is named after Bob Stupak. Now, before before that existed right there, there was a place called uh, Las Vegas World Casino. And Las Vegas World Casino was by crazy casino magnet Bob Stupak, who went to heaven a long time ago, presuming he was a good person. Now, people seem to like Bob, but he actually got investigated for arson. <laughs> Pretty hardcore. <laughs> Uh, when the resorts, uh, Las Vegas World Casino burned down. So Stupak Park out here. We've got a little mini soccer pitch, some stuff for the children's to play. So uh, all adults, look at this sign. This, this has been designated a children's park by the city of Las Vegas. All adults must be accompanied by a 12, by a child age 12 years or younger. So you can't hang out in this park if you're an adult because they don't want a bunch of perverts coming in here and doing stupid gross stuff to the kids. That means that I'm not accompanied by a 12 or under person, so I better go. Look at the casinos from back here. So I just think that the dollars, the 99 cent store is in a tough business model where it's real hard to actually turn a profit and grind out a profit, if that makes sense to you. Darkwing Duck, thank you so much Darkwing for joining up to our Patreon because we post stuff up. If you're on Patreon this morning or on channel members yesterday, you noticed I did a 16 minute tour of a really cool spot, seven minute drive off the strip where it just beats Italy over at the um, over at the Park MGM into the ground. So you guys can get that. It's in 4K, 60 frames per second. Boston Gardens. That's the Boston Gardens right there. That's where they, that's where the Bruins play and the, and the Celtics. Not really. Boston guys. Wow. This area is weird back here, man. It really is. Let's see what this guy walk here. So this is Industrial Road. This is a taxi, a cab company right back here. 
I didn't even realize that industrial came out this way. Industrial goes and runs parallel to almost the whole entire strip. And when you come down here, it's just a bunch of manufacturing and strip clubs and things such as this matter. So we got that. Kind of gets a little bit blah from here. There's not much to see down there. Hi Steve from Portage, Indiana. Always look both ways. Crossing in the just jungle. <laughs> Good tips, that's true. I noticed that all the food is smaller, the shrinkflation. I made a YouTube short about that. We were, we're big fans and advocates once every few months, that is. We go down to the Ellis Island. They have a nice little restaurant, but the meats got smaller, the plates got smaller. And uh, I posted that up, it was very polarizing. 30,000 YouTube short views later. People telling me I'm an idiot for even eating out. People telling me I'm right. So it's a it's very interesting the polarizing views you get. Harmon and Cobalt is by Harbor Island Weeklies, which is real bad, but it's a pretty crowded area. So the Harbor Island has the most police calls. This is what we used to have. There used to be a phone booth here. So we used to have a, a phone booth. Those don't exist anymore. Remember the game Grand Theft Auto, the first one from the 90s. You would literally hear a phone booth ringing and you'd walk up to it. You don't do that anymore. So we're gonna walk on the other side of the place too. Summerlin Centennial Hills is nice, yes. <clears throat> so show some love to the channel, guys. We're um, we're trying to get to 71,900 now. Believe it or not, you guys pushed us to 70, 71,827 after our last live stream. We got some great content coming up that are regular uploads too. If it's your first time watching, Thank you, thank you, thank you. If it's your 10th time watching, or any time in between or above that, thank you, thank you, thank you. We got the best, smartest YouTube audience. And we got so many donations on Friday. That was so nice of you guys. Um, we had some cash apps and stuff. Oh my gosh, who is this? Mike Lee. I just bought a level two yearly package. The gambling visit we did never worked out very well. The Nibbler, ha. So I don't know what a level two yearly package is. Oh, you did. Oh, I know what it is. Wow, Mike Lee just paid for a level two for one year on channel memberships. Thanks, Mike. Mike is gonna have a channel out here called The Nibbler. He showed me a gaming um, strategy where Mike's like like a genius, this Mike Lee guy. So he went in, we went into the uh, hotel together. Which one was it? I don't even remember. I think it was the Paris. No, I can't. Planet Hollywood. We went into Planet Hollywood. And he managed to put the same bet on the bubble craps machines over and over. And each time, like four out of five times, he'd win 20 or 30 bucks, 20 or 30 bucks, 20 or 30 bucks. And he can repeat it over and over again. Amazing. I told Mike he should package it up and make a course and I'll help him sell it. I don't know if he was into that idea. Would you guys pay for a course where you could see a method that would allow you to gamble for six or eight hours and be at a, a small profit on 40 to 60% of the bets that you place? Tell me in the chat. If I could show you a way to make a small profit on 40 to 60% of all the bets you place where you don't chase big money and you just have fun gaming, knowing that four to six times out of 10 you place a bet you're gonna win, would you go for that? Because I think that could be a packaged up and sold for one price. And Mike has a global audience because bubble craps is everywhere. So tell me yes or no. No, everybody says no. That's okay. You guys are only a few of the peoples. Let's keep walking and we're going to find some other stuff to look at here. And I don't gamble, as you know. I just don't do it. It's one of my packs to my wife not to do. So that's okay, too. I just made with Steven that morning in less than 30 minutes over 381 dollars and he did actually i was there my mouth was a gape on the floor you can get that stuff for free okay that's fine you can also you know you can also get it pre-packaged and some people like that kind of stuff it's okay what's the temperature today today's gonna be okay it's just, it's uh, currently 54 degrees in vegas but look at this guys i want to show you all something Look at the temperatures coming into this week. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? 
So we got uh, highs of 87 on Friday. Friday will be a windy day because Saturday is gonna drop to 66. But if you're coming here this week, you're gonna have some nice weather followed by some chilly weather. So it's good, you know? Guys, do me a favor and share this right now. Thank you to Mike Lee for the only super chat donation on this stream, but we appreciate it very much. It's good, good. I was actually emailing one of you guys and uh, opened up a little bit on how much time we put into this channel and <clears throat> I actually calculated it. You guys wanna hear something sad? Say yes in the chat if you wanna hear a sad confession. Say yes in the chat if you wanna hear a sad confession. Say yes in the chat if you wanna hear a sad confession. So, say yes in the chat. Let me know, I'll tell you something sad. Um, so, if I really, <laughs> I'd make more of a fast food job <laughs> if I did this. Um, work about 15 hours a week at this, and um, 15 hours a week, 60 hours a month. And that's like, you know, driving to and from live streams, live streaming, making videos at home editing stuff, researching things, putting it up. And I noticed that I make about $16 an hour doing this, which is fine. I love it because I like the creative stuff. It's kind of not a drive. I like doing creative stuff, but at the same time, it was kind of weird because it's like I calculated it out and fast food joints pay 16 an hour. I thought that was funny. I thought that was pretty funny. So, but that's okay, you know. Let's go into stratosphere if, they'll, if, the, uh, if the streaming signal lets us. Nice, I know the 100 plus winter weather is coming. It is coming. It is coming, that's for sure. Yeah, fast food jobs out here paying about 16 to 18 an hour. Manager jobs about 20. <clears throat> I have passed out the cards Penelope on the strip a long time ago, around 2007. Here's some more, look at these. Um, finished studio apartments for rent. Do y'all wanna stay at these places? I think these are condemned. I don't think you can stay here. Studios for rent. These were 130 weekly when they were available, but I don't think that they're available anymore. Part of that is that they're chained up, so. Ryan says, unknown fact, one of the legs on the stratosphere is crooked. It bends further inward into others. It was an engineering flaw during construction. That's a good unknown fact about the strip or about the stratosphere. That's true. It doesn't affect it. It's not unsafe. Yeah, but an engineer poured the concrete wrong during its construction. It's a weird area, man. Thank you so much. Nice of you. There you go. 583. If you share this video some more. Uh, then we might get up to 600. That would be really cool. We're walking in the area with the most crime in the, uh, near the Las Vegas Strip. I don't know why it's got so much, but we have the Aztec Hotel over here as well. We never know what we're going to see on the, Saturday, on the Sunday morning stream because I take you into little pockets of the Strip that nobody ever pays attention to. Stratosphere up here, yes please. My thumbnail was made with AI. I actually asked it to make a hyper-realistic photo of the stratosphere. It did a pretty good job. Avocado wants to see crime happening in progress. And then my video will be um, will be uh, used in a court of law. Then I'll be famous and also maybe a retribution on me for getting somebody prosecuted, huh? <laughs> 600 people watching. We're walking down over the stratosphere. Naked City was behind us. Uh, Dice, we just walked through it. And we're going to be going on the other side here, down St. Louis, into the back end. There's actually a pawn shop up here. There's another Welcome to Vegas sign. It's quite controversial. What people are trying, what they've been trying to do in the stratosphere is include themselves as a part of the strip, technically. But they're technically not. This is just a small little place called Aztec Inn Casino. There are 13 closing 99 cent stores. One closing in North Las Vegas and three stores in Henderson. So we got the menu here. So if you're looking for cheap eats, 
this may be the place for you. Thai food. They do everything here. That could be a good or a bad thing. So Philly cheesesteak and fries. This is probably the lowest price food you're going to find anywhere on the strip, if I'm being honest with you. And then we also have some breakfast options here. 10 bucks for a big breakfast. Yeah, these are some good prices. That's some good stuff there. Let's go take a look in here. Five dollars for a breakfast special. Then you get the protein menu. I don't know how much protein is in a Monte Cristo. Steak and eggs probably got a lot of protein. Get rid of them home fries if you don't like your carbs. So this is the Aztec. We're just gonna poke our camera in here for half a second, literally. So three dollar paps blue ribbon. And this is it. You can see all four corners of this place right from here. I don't even know why they got a stage. Yep, that's it. And it, I mean like, it smells dank. It smells dank. There's an overwhelming hit of 45 years of cigarette smoke in there. It's kind of bizarro. So we're walking down the north end of the Las Vegas Strip today. Yeah, it's huge, right? It's so big. <laughs> what are you gonna do? So that's the tour. I could stand at the front door and give you the tour of the entire property 100%. <laughs> the smell of sadness and regret. The smell of bad choices. I'm just kidding. You know, I actually worked up here at one point. Uh, we were doing timeshare. And so what happens is this little booth that's disguised as a Grand Canyon booth is actually a timeshare booth, although there will be a Grand Canyon person in here. And you would stand over here and you would try to talk to people and there'd be a guy behind the counter and you'd have your greeter or maybe I was the greeter and you'd walk up to these folks crossing and you'd say, hey guys, how you doing? Where are you from? And so on and so forth. They would talk to you and you'd try to hook them over, give them do a timeshare tour. Yep, smells dank, it does. Dank memes, dank smells. Let's walk this way. Uh, we're going to go and see the new IHOP, the old IHOP, and some stuff that I wish still existed. There's some hostels up here. Some people want me to jump from the Strat. Mike Lee wants me to jump from the Strat. Um, I think I need to buy life insurance. That's not a joke. Nobody's ever died, but I, I don't want to have bad luck. I don't want to be the first. It'd be the biggest Vegas stream ever, right? YouTuber dies filming himself on the bus on the Strat. I'll just leave a will and I'll say, in the case of my death, retitle my video, rest in peace, not leaving Las Vegas, live stream death from the stratosphere. And that video, probably not be monetized because of copyrighted music. <laughs> so nobody would make a penny. It would leave nothing for my, uh, for my beneficiaries, my sweet wife. This is the gateway observation deck over here. This was built a little while back, determining the fact that you are now in the city of Las Vegas and not on the strip. Timeshare, you buy the deed, you, then you pay the maintenance fee for life. But some people like that, Del Y. I mean, like, I know it may not be for you. See, I don't see any application in buying an Apple Vision Pro. I, I mean, it would be fun for a little bit, but I don't want to sit on my couch and be sucked more into a virtual reality. But some people love that thing. And so some people don't see the uh, reasoning to buy a timeshare. Some people do. Um, and uh, the people that do can generally afford it really well. What's up, Deuces Wild? I love you because your deuces are wild. It's an Aerosmith song. Anyways, we got the bees pollinating. Oh, really? I haven't been in a while. You know it's springtime, and you got the bees out there. See the bees? Bzz, bzz, bzz. Where is he? Come on, you son of a gun. I'm trying to show you guys wildlife on the strip. This is entertainment of Vegas. This is what you came to see. Are you not entertained? These flowers, these things pollinate for a very short period of the year. And then you have bees that are flying around them, which are incredibly hard to find because they're freaking bees and they fly. There's one, they fly really fast. So a lot of these things grow wild. Love from Toronto, how you guys doing? Bottle brush bushes, interesting. Bottle brush bushes. So now I know what to call them. We, I, I live, uh, I'm from uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. This is the bird. So you get the birds and the bees. So the birds are out here. They're doing their thing. Eating the bees, presumably. Look at these little sparrows. You don't see them. Uh, what I'll tell you is this, when the, when the shutdown happened, 
these birds were everywhere. There was no people. And since there's not a lot of people up here, you'll see like wildlife and stuff just doing their thing. But when the strip shut down, it was really easy and real normal to see these all over the place. Now you don't see them unless you're at a place. Um, yeah, so that's interesting stuff. When I was a kid, uh, well, kid, a young man, I had a camera and I used to go to the Devonian Gardens in downtown Calgary. And Jersey T with a super sticker. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate you. Why are there so many movies filmed in Canada? Because the Canadian government offers, and a lot of provincial governments on top of that. So the Canadian government offers a subsidy to film in Canada. I'll tell you that in a minute, uh, about that in a minute. Also, the provincial government will offer subsidies to film in Canada. So let's say you want to film a movie and it's set in uh, Iowa, or North Dakota. That you can go to North Dakota or you can go to Canada. If you film in Canada, the Canadian government commands that a certain percentage of the film crew you hire be Canadian. That can be the actors, that can be the people running the cameras. So it generates jobs for Canadians and it also pumps money into the local government. For example, if you wanted to simulate New York City, which Jackie Chan did in Rumble in Brooklyn, it was filmed 100% in, in Vancouver, Canada. If you wanted to make that look like New York and you're filming in Vancouver, Canada, you would reach out to the city and the police and they would take a bunch of police cars and they would put logos on them like NYPD and uh, you would have those rentals. You're staying at hotels, you're staying at places. So you're, you're, you're actually getting money back. Um, the company that's doing this big time is, I think is Greenland. It might be Greenland. They're filmed True. I said, not True Romance, True. My gosh, True Detective. The last season of True Detective on HBO filmed there, and they were trying to make it look like Alaska. And it works well because it's snowy and cold. So yeah, Cali is expensive. <laughs> so if you're wondering how to support the channel at this point, you can subscribe to the channel. That would be keen, and it would be key. I'm trying to get another 80 subscribers. Hey, what's up? If I get another 80 subscribers, and I can get over the hump, and we can have 72,000. 900 subscribers, oh my gosh, we're almost at 70, or 71,000, we're almost at 72,000, that would be pretty great. This area over here is just nothing. If you guys wanted to support us, you can send us a super chat if you guys want to through PayPal here, notleavinglasvegas.com forward slash donate. We also have Cash App there too, and uh, that would be cool because we get it right away and they don't take all of our money away. Uh, or you can send me an email, or you can send me a text, I've already put all that stuff up there. What's up, Jeff? Jeff is Filipino. Connection, my Pinoy boy in the house. They can make anywhere look like anywhere if they make sense financially. It was Rumble in the Box. I thought I said that. Maybe I said a different one. My bad if I did. Sorry, not perfect. Not a perfect person. Not a perfect person, as Mike Tyson would say. Not a perfect person. Sorry. <laughs> Iron Mike. Awful, bums almost have more rights than taxpayers. What are they building the big Hollywood studio project? That is way out in Summerlin. Sony Studios is building a movie studio out here in Vegas. Maybe they will film a Spider-Man here. Probably not, but they, you know, it's good because these, uh, these productions, they come out to Vegas, they film for several days and then boom, they leave. They just go away and uh, they go back to LA they do their shoots, their, their, their reshoots in the studio. They use these giant LED boards that allow people to, it's like a green screen, but it's not. They're using technology in movies like you ain't never seen before. Um, there's a, a thing that used to be just games called Unreal Engine. So they can use these giant, huge digital 8K displays. They can drop the actors into those 8K areas and basically green screen it green screen it this is atomic golf over here just opened up recently <clears throat> so the draw you know the hope is if you're going to come to vegas and film a movie like the born movie it was the last big one filmed out here or the hangover back 25 years ago that you're going to stay in vegas to film the rest of it and so we can do that at a big huge studio and not have to take the production outside of vegas after so we got the ihop and then there's a new high hop over here down this way we're gonna see a uh, pawn shops and mishmash of different businesses. And then of course we have this giant sign right here. So this sign right here is weird. Why does this exist? Well, this is the battle for where the strip stops in the eyes of the stratosphere. So technically, 
the stratosphere is really not a part of uh, of the strip. The strip stops at Sahara, and that's where the police determine the strip stops. That's where the county commissioners determine the strip stops. So, if the strip stops at Sahara, and you want to put your hotel in the mind's eye of being in on the Las Vegas Strip, you just build one of these and you make it look like you're a part of the strip. You're not, but that's okay. Um, and that's why that arch exists. That arch kind of shows the cutoff of where the strip and the city start. So right now, technically we're not on the Las Vegas Strip, but that's okay. It's the strip all the same. And uh, as long as you're having fun here, that's all that really matters. So we have all of our chain restaurants, Denny's, IHOPs, all these kinds of things. It's another Oyo over here. Why did that open up? Let's go down. I don't know where we want to go. This way, I guess. I have a PhD in stuff. Why not? Shared this with somebody, guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, I have a call to action for you guys to sub up. We do Sunday mornings with Steven. We do Friday nights on the regular stripper downtown. We also go out and about. Um, I have a video we're planning out with a graffiti artist. Wow, Dixon M, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dixon M. Super nice of you. $10 super chat, boom. We're coming in slow but steady, folks. We'll still be, we'll be able to eat better versions of ramen next month. <laughs> Would you recommend moving to Vegas? Sure. Depends on what you do and what you want to get out of it. If you're going to be a casino bum and you have unlimited money, maybe. If you're looking for a new opportunity, sure. If you work in healthcare, it's a good city right now. If you're running away from problems, don't come here. You're just running, you just put yourself in a whole another set of problems. <laughs> you know, why not? I mean, shoot, I live here. <clears throat> so I don't know if you guys notice this, I'm walking a little bit slower than I usually do to give you guys a better view of everything out here. I usually speed run through these things. We have Kira Leaf, it's a dispensary north of the stratosphere here. There's another one down there called Cookies, it's closer. The Campbell Nader is on fire. Well, thank you guys, appreciate it. Somebody asked how the homeless population is. I haven't seen, oh, I lied. There's a homeless person over there. Right by the trash cans back there. So there's one person. No, that's not a person. Oh yes, that is a person. They're squatting down, collecting stuff, doing whatever they do. So that's a homeless person over there. Not a lot. Martin D reminds you that you can go to notleavinglasvegas.com forward slash donate if you want to juice this up right away. Super helpful, thank you very much. It was cool when they filmed Con Air at a casino and it was awesome on the movie Casino. They had all the old cars and fake old phone booths, yes. So we have this chain of Mexican restaurants, quite good stuff, street tacos, Cura Leaf. Um, is this the one? No, there's a, there is actually a dispensary behind the Circus Circus that has a marijuana lounge right now. This is the Oyo Oasis Hotel. Don't do it! <laughs> I mean, like, look, it's probably relatively cheap to stay here. That's one thing. Traffic is going to get worse on the Strip. I wouldn't move there unless you want to walk a lot. Well, if you live here, you don't ever go to the Strip. That's one thing. When you live here, you, at first, yes. Okay, let's be honest. You're going to come to the Strip. It's new. It's shiny. It's novel. You're amazed. You're mystified. Is there a cop coming? Uh, and then you're not going to come here because you have no reason to come here because you've seen it and because you live a regular life. Whoa, Gary K. Gary K flipped us $10 to our Super Ninja Link. Now leaving lasvegas.com forward slash donate. Thank you, Gary K. That is super awesome of you. You're a good man. Thank you, Gary K. Wow, you guys can do the same if you want. I'll be emailing people back later. I finished up all my emails that I got last stream this morning or yesterday and then I'm going to get on all my text messages. So this is the Oyo Hotel on the north end of the Strip. Would you stay here, guys? Tell me in the comments. Would you stay here? Would you stay here, yes or no? Mm, tell me. 
What do you think? Is it worth the trade-off on the price? Is it worth the trade-off on the price to stay at a place like this? This is the old motor hotel. They're very festive here. They actually still have Christmas tree in the lobby. Happy Crimbo, everybody. Stu Unger died here. What? I don't know who that is. I know a little bit about stuff, but I don't know who that is. Hmm. Right next to that, we have a pretty cool little wedding venue. Norman Bates lives there. You think they charge by the hour. This is a cool little wedding venue, Chapel of the Flowers. I think this is one of the ones that's on the historical registry of places. So it's an important place. And they do bigger weddings out here. As you can see, they have their own wedding sign. Mm -hmm. We've got a limousine getting all polished up. Let's go down this way and see what this looks like. So we have the chapel in the background. That was interesting. I've never been down here. Whoa, E appreciates the content. Thank you, E. Thank him 689 times. Can you guys say thank you, E, T-Y-E? You just say T-Y-E. T-Y-E. Making my dreams come true. You're the man, dog. Appreciate you. Stu Unger is one of the most famous poker players to ever live. See, I'm not a poker guy but I learned something from my memory bank, so I'll store it in there forevermore. I love how they have a map of this place. Look how many chapels they have. The Victoria and the Gazebo, La Capella, the Glass Gardens, and the Magnolia. So they have all these different chapels out here. This has gotta be one of the biggest chapels in the entire city. Hello, how you doing? This place is gorgeous. Isn't it? Not what you would expect in this area, it's nice. Very nice. This lady's like, what are you saying? I'm saying positive stuff, I promise. So, very nice up here. So if you're gonna get married, you can do it right down here. Very cool. Poker isn't the only game on a casino. Is the only game on a casino that isn't rigged? I don't know. I think Zach was saying that it's the only game where the house can't have a big advantage. I think that's what you mean, Zach. <laughs> Well, look, I don't know how many nighttime weddings they do here. Probably zero is the answer to that one. But uh, Chapel of the Flowers on the North End. I got married at the Little Church of the West on the South End. It's nothing near that place, except for the Pinball Hall of Fame. So you can get married and go play pinball. <laughs> so this place is pretty slick. I don't see any signs saying that it's uh, on the historical registry of places or nothing like that. But hey, there's a homeless people now on this part of the strip. Their movie's about Stu Unger. One of a kind was a book. Very cool. No house advantage in poker. They get a percentage of each pot for tournament buy-in. Casinos can care less who wins. This is brand new. We've been renovating stuff up here. This used to be a little dingy building. And now it's a big old flashy 7-Eleven. Arepas. There's dispensaries out here. See, we could walk to downtown technically if we wanted to. If it was lucrative enough for us to do so. In terms of subscribers and other things. So if you're just joining us, thank you for joining us. Subscribe to the channel. We're doing Sundays with Steven. It's our Sunday morning walks. We're taking you into areas that are nowhere near what you think. This is a area such as that where just off the beaten path here, the crime is not great. The whole total crimes in Vegas, there was 900, 900 plus crimes last two weeks. And at this point now, in this one area, 23 of them occurred in this area, which may not sound of a lot, but when you do the math, that means that 20% of the crime committed in Clark County was committed in this area. So that's interesting to me at least. Wait, wait. I'll wait, thank you. Wait. Wait, wait. 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 So we show you stuff like this on Sundays. We do regular uploads during the week. I tell you the truth about the city. I'm gonna start making some videos that are actionable, answering some questions that you guys might have. Those channel, those videos make your channel grow. I wasn't even thinking about them. So that's important to do. I'm gonna drop by Pawn Stars. You know, the last time we went into Pawn Stars, our signal just decided that it didn't want to live anymore. It didn't value its life and it disappeared. Maybe that's not the case today. Let's find out. Let's go a little bit further up. So we got some cool uh, 
graffiti all over Las Vegas and I'm working with my friend Black 57. I called him and we chatted last night about doing a, another graffiti video, but this one will be downtown. It's gonna be fun stuff. Make sure to subscribe to see that. I'm gonna do graffiti in Vegas and I'll be terrible at it. That's for sure. <laughs> I mean, I just spray paint metal stuff at my house. Whoa! Mr. Nelson A did $10 to our notleavinglasvegas.com slash donate. Thank you, Mr. Nelson A. Nelson A, saving our bacon, helping us pay our bills and eat. Thank you so much, Nelson A. You guys can get on, on the action. Go to notleavinglasvegas.com forward slash donate if you guys want to contribute there. And you can use PayPal or Cash App. Thank you guys so much. 429 is gas here. Five miles away, it's 490. 489. So the Peppermint Rhino, this used to be the Olympic Gardens and it opened as Peppermint Rhino or Peppermint Hippo, pardon me, which I think is hilarious because it's almost like South Park come to life. South Park, I think, has a fake strip club in the show called the Peppermint Hippo Topless Cabaret. Open 24 hours. So this was the original Olympic Gardens. Wait. The owner of Olympic Gardens went to prison. Uh, they thought he was doing SE blank trafficking through the property and they couldn't catch him on anything until they found his girlfriend and the federal government threatened his girlfriend with prison time and they got him on RICO charges, tax charges, which according to a politician two weeks ago is not a crime, but it is a crime. <laughs> so there's that. But uh, yeah, RICO is the way to get Al Capone, the gangster, the mobster, you know? So we got the stratosphere down here. We're walking a little bit more northbound now. Bahamar, seafood and tacos. Got some cool graffiti on the side of that building. Artwork, really. Bahamar is excellent seafood, Ernie says. Very cool, thank you, Ernie. So we have a dispensary. There used to be some wedding chapel stuff over here. They started to tear this all up. New Leaf was a wedding business as well. That's closed now. Back here we have kind of Main Street goes off this way. We should walk back to Main Street, I think, because it's got some interesting character and stuff down here. See some stuff we never see. Do I encourage you to walk this way? Yes, I think it's a good walk. I think it's healthy to get out and see stuff that's not necessarily the, you know, the billion dollar newest thing on the strip. I don't see a problem with it in the morning, especially, or in the daytime when it's in. But we'll see. Oh my gosh, $20 from Edward A. Edward A to our PayPal. Thank you, Edward A. Man, you're gonna break a record for us, guys. Edward A used notlavinglasvegas.com forward slash donate to donate $20 to our PayPal for us to help these streams continue on and help uh, you know justify the time we put into our channel. Thank you so much, Edward A. You can see that on the screen right now. Thank you, you're the best. You're the best in the world. So there's a couple of homeless folks down here, unfortunately. I hate to see it. Just a reality in most places. You can see the bags and stuff down there on the other side of the little Prius. So that's somebody who's just carting their life around from place to place. I can't imagine that, and I'm so blessed that I'm not like that. We've been hand to mouth before, but my goodness, that's tough. Just received that call from your agent. So I think I need representation. I was listening to a podcast yesterday. It was on. Uh, it was having a social media manager and they were talking about a, a there's this podcaster. She had three podcasts she did. She had 12,000 total views. Barstool Sports liked her enough to take a gamble on her. They paid her a $100,000 contract. She got 12 million views over the course of the next year. She was angry and suing Barstool Sports because she thinks she got a bum deal. But if you think about that, Barstool Sports essentially gambled money on her with no promise of return. It worked out really well for them because her podcast blew up once it got on their network. I'm wondering if there's something like that for people like me. I don't know about that. <clears throat> Wall Street Warlord says he'll be my social media agent. Very cool. I do have actually a, a call with a company that wants to take my money on Tuesday morning. And uh, they... They, they claim they help brands, but I know they're going to want to charge me probably about $1,000 a month, so it'll be a no, but I just want to hear what they have to say. So you'd be my agent, huh? All right, I'll wait for that call. 
So there's a cool comedy club down here. This area is really switched on once you hit Main Street in Wyoming. Let's go take a look at some stuff that you do not know exists in Vegas down here. Well, I know, oh, $12 from Moto GP Memories. Uh, you don't have a, you're not giving me your real name so I can say that. Thank you for $12 from Moto GP Memories on the PayPal. Super nice of you. So we're gonna cross Wyoming. Yak in the box. Because when you eat it, you go yak. Thank you so much, guys. Mmm, downtown Las Vegas, welcome. Welcome to the new age. This area is really nice, actually. So we kind of walked from Naked City, which is behind the big golf canopy for Atomic Golf down there. And now we're down here, past the Super Pond, and we're getting into the thick of the Arts District. I don't think I'd walk this far today, but hey, why not? We have Richard Pryor, Joan Rivers, and Polly Shore. Question is, would you put Polly Shore in the same category as Joan Rivers and Richard Pryor? This is a famous comedy club in Vegas, I've heard, called Wise Guys. And so, I, and, and he does perform here. I'm sorry, don't smoke, bud. So I wanted to know if I had a cigarette. Did I tell them why Naked City is called Naked City? Yes, because every Friday night, the, the naked people run through the city and say, look at me, look at me. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's because the, the uh, showgirls used to suntan topless on the roofs. Do we put Polly Shore in the same? Do we, I mean, she used to be funny before she decided that everything in life is politics. And that's the only thing she talks about. So yeah, this is an active comedy club down here. Some of these guys have had, you know, prime Peacock specials, Comedy Central. Yeah, very cool. Some of them don't, but yeah. And who is this? Oh, George Carlin, right? Yes. Um, I, oh, you looked up the boutique hotel I end up at. So you looked up the English hotel. It depends on when you're coming in, the English hotel can be expensive. It depends because they get a lot of convention traffic for the world market. The world market's not too far from there. So yeah, you'll end up getting some higher rates because there's only 70 plus rooms, 70 or so rooms in that property, the English hotel. And so yeah, it could definitely get expensive if all of them are booked out. You just got to be careful on that kind of stuff. So we're down here on Main Street, Arts District. Pops Automotive. Like, these places aren't long for this city area. Those Don Rickles? Oh my gosh, Zach, thank you. You hockey puck? <laughs> Don Rickles, the insult comic. You can't do that anymore. Everybody would complain. So my feelings are hurt. How dare you? Because woke is everywhere, buddy. Look at this mural. Oh, I love this one. It's a Clint Eastwood. Ask for the four loon rate. That's <laughs> English. Well, there you go. What kind of cars are these? Are these Audis? 500? 349 a month, baby. <clears throat> this is a rolling sk roller skate. Don't get into an accident on this. Oh, these are Fiats. I love the style. It's kind of slick. Fiat. Stands for found on road dead. Just kidding. I can't say what Fiat. It stands for, back in the day they said it stands for fix it again, Tony, but that's kind of racist. But Fiat's an Italian brand, or at least it was. I don't think it's owned by an Italian company now. Go ahead. Have a swell Saturday, punks. What the heck? <laughs> okay, very nice. Honey pot. Look at all these arts places. They're not open right now. It's kind of subdued down here. Give this a few hours. There's going to be people crawling all over out here. I'm surprised we're not seeing anybody right now. What is this place called? This place called Sin Wave. Sin Wave. What is Sin Wave? Oh, it looks like it's like a club. Ooh, look at all the hardcore, crazy satanic imagery up here. 
Posh Cineway Live Music Venue. So, you know, you have all these hip hop clubs. Look at this. You got like Judas Priest Tribute Band, Vampire Gala. Is this your thing? Tell me if you're into this kind of stuff. I have a friend who's real into punk. Punk music. It's Fiat Chrysler Group now. Well, there you go. So, anybody ever seen the Hangover movie? I know you have. So, there's a part in the Hangover movie where they go to a pawn shop. And this is that pawn shop. But it's not a pawn shop anymore. It's now an antique mall. And just to give you... Oh, it's not punk, it's metal? I gotcha. Well, you can't beat the metal. That's what Tenacious D told me. So you can see right here, this is the scene from The Hangover. And uh, that's where this was filmed, right in this exact same spot, Main Street. Vintage antiques and collectibles. So you can do your Hangover movie tour if you wanted to down here. You can't beat the metal. Punk rock tried to kill the metal. It was smitten to the ground. <laughs> wow, I'm gonna listen to some today. I was listening to Tenacious D yesterday. The Pick of Destiny. I'm such a nerd, and I'm not even a stoner. It's like a stoner movie. Funny stuff, though. So we are now here. Look at all this artwork, dude. There's so much art on these walls. It's not punk. I don't even know. What do you, John? What do you, what do you, what a genre is the tragically hip? We got the nice cars coming out. I was down here once, and I saw. Quite literally, I saw like 12 McLarens. It was like some McLaren club, Las Vegas. This guy's doing a photo walk, it looks like. I should tell him that Art Alley is downtown. So we're gonna do graffiti here on the channel. Subscribe to the channel, because uh, I have a video, I'm gonna be a graffiti artist coming out. So this is some cool stuff. And I know exactly how Graffiti Alley works now, downtown. People don't go to Graffiti Alley. Judas Priest tribute. Said priest. I figured it might be Judas Priest. Whoa. This is slick. Got Mark Stone and everything. Whew. That's cool. Kind of like the, sh the sad part about this is that one day somebody's going to lease this space and then you won't have this up here anymore. You stream on kick. You pan hourly rage and take out watch less. Uh, but then, you know, uh, you know, kick. I never heard of kick. I'm sure it's a good platform. Oh, we got another one for the aces. This is cool. I like it. There's a lot of art down here. More than there's ever been. Gosh, this is cool, man. Um, yeah, but then you have to have an audience to stream on kick, you know? And then you get an audience, and then sure, they'll pay you an hourly rate because they probably are splitting ad revenue. It's a good idea, actually. So that that's very nice. Which one do you like better, the Golden Knights or the Aces? I mean, I'm a fan of hockey, so I like the Golden Knights. But what do you guys think was better, the Golden Knights one or the Aces one? Tell me in the comments. We just went Knights. Hockey is Canadian, that's for sure. JNC's Clocks and Antiques. Whoa. Closed Tuesdays. Oh, there you go. So we got contemporary art galleries down here. Skate shops. Skate shops. What? It's a head shop. More life. It's like you're in Ocean Beach or something. You know? It's kind of weird. This place finally opened. It's called the Colorado. Man, this has been around for under construction for 10 years and I'm so happy that it finally opened it's about time dude about time so you can see like this car place is closed they're moving on July 31st it says it's closing down and of course they are closing I mean it's you know look at the, what is what is going on here why is this guy walking out here food where are you going? Why are you on the corner? Are you catering? This is like Uber Eats Grubhub for downtown Las Vegas. So a lot of these places are not gonna be around much longer in their current form. They're gonna be leased out and gentrified. We're down on Main Street right now, actually. I really should change 
the title of this video. I think I might just do that right now because we passed all the crime and I don't want to be misleading people. Some of you guys are watching. Got the haters watching going, this guy misleads people all the time, you jerk. Uh, let's see here. So we're gonna go tour and uh, the hidden part, the most, change the title. Gun and save. Good. Change the title. Good stuff. Roller skate shop has a roller derby track in it. My goodness. This is the coolest little walk though. I, I think this is pretty slick. What do you guys think? more cool artwork over here too on the walls. Velveteen Rabbit. Main Street Provisions. Good pie. Look at all this stuff. You guys never knew this was down here? You gotta get your butt out here and do a walk down here. That's for sure. Yep. Joe Flaherty died. That's true. Well, that's disgusting. There's just like human sized feces right there. I, I don't know if that is a human. I hope it's not human because I don't want to be living in San Francisco. Sunday walk in Old Henderson, you mean Water Street? Possibly, maybe, I don't know. Got to eventually hit every part of town. Why not? Subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel. We're right now on Main Street showing you guys the coolest walk. We started off in the dangerous part. I changed the topic of the video. So when people find it in the YouTube search, it's gonna show where we are currently. I don't want people to like get misled and stuff. So we have a Mexican restaurant here that we've eaten at. Casa Don Juan. This is actually a good little restaurant. There's several of these. They're not really traditional Mexican, but they're Americanized Mexican. So I think you'd like it. They got good margaritas here. That's all I know. And you. I don't know if they still do it, but you used to be able to find amazing Groupons for Cinco de Mayo specials for this place. Find like Groupon. Give us a tour of the Mafia I used to hang out. Well, this this right here would have been all mafioso stuff. You know, because this is like a very old part of the city, considering how close to downtown it is. I love this place, Antique Alley Mall. I'm into old stuff, old vintage crap that I don't really need, especially camera lenses and stuff like that. So I would typically go in here. So if you're into shopping, like you probably like this kind of stuff. Esther's Kitchen, this used to be a retro place too and then it burned out. Actually, let's go back even further, 15 years. So as far as I'm almost positive, this used to be called Opportunity Village, which is one of the premium best charities in the entire city. Opportunity Village, they have education centers, they work with people with developmental disabilities, and then they have a thrift store. But then the thrift store caught fire, and then they had to reopen it. They reopened it off of Charleston and Decatur, kind of, in that area. And then this place was a retro place? No, I don't know if that's the exact order. I don't know if it, this was the retro place, but I think this was Opportunity Village. They closed down after a fire, and they moved out. There was a retro shop down here, can't remember exactly where it is called retro vegas they closed down as well but this is what these vintage shops look like down here this sucks because they always want me to put my bag into a locker and i mean i got no reason to do that but you know i don't know there's no way at the front how you doing can't complain right oh yeah so I used to come down here, buy these old vintage camera lenses and stuff. Although that's not very vintage, that's a digital camera, but they have a whole bunch of old stuff. So if you're into photography, man, you can, you can get into photography and buy old camera lenses to put on your new cameras and stuff. So this place in here just goes all the way to the very back. It's got a lot of really cool stuff in it. Hi, how you doing? So yeah. So there's a whole bunch of these things down here. These are really slick if you like the old city. They have a ton of old vintage Vegas stuff down here. So if you're a vintage Vegas junkie, 
You can find everything down here relating to the old strip and old Fremont and things like that. I don't spend too much time in here. And I can see your fortune. Come see it too, no? Yep. Yep. They didn't ask me to put my bag in the locker. That's fine. If they did, I was going to say, hey, can I skip that today? I mean, if I steal anything, it's going to be live on a YouTube stream. So <laughs> they probably would have uh, logic that out and said, okay, yeah, you don't have to put your bag in the locker. So we're on the north part. What's up, Surfing Blackies? I met Surfing Blackies a couple weeks ago. Down all Fremont Street. I was hanging out for a minute there with uh, Mark the Other Me. Mark the Other Me. Pharmacy Board Shop. It'll be Tony Hawk. Next Tony Hawk. Wow, that was actually a cool photo. That was taken at the World Market Center. I like when they actually use Vegas related stuff for these kinds of things. Although that really looks doctored. I'm sure it isn't. It's kind of neat though. We got bail bondsmen. Some of the only old bail bondsmen out here. Oh, you tell me we got all the way to Charleston already? Wow. That's wild. This is creepy. Thing, man, look at this. Okay, this old VW bug. You see, we got the German badge on it. I'm gonna sneeze. Oh my gulai! I don't want to sneeze. Please don't sneeze. Okay, so oh, yeah, it's gonna happen. Look at this. That's some creep. That's cringe factor 10. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry to sneeze in your ear. I couldn't suppress it. Okay, so. If you go further down, we're going to end up downtown Las Vegas. Mm, they have all this artist stuff down here. Tons of spray. Tons of graffiti. Whoa. P okay, we got Prince. We got a lion. We got an eight ball bail bond. But then we get super political. Super political. <laughs> if that's not political, I don't know what is. USCIS in there. Um, and then what are these? Why are these on every single sign? Clothing boutique. This is what they call guerrilla marketing, my friends. You can go to the clothing boutique. They've, they've literally stuck these on all of these signs. That's so weird. <laughs> That's the way to market, I guess. And if you want some clothing and you also are trying to get out of, get your, your loved one out of prison, this is perfect for you. I have something for you. We have our prison special. We sell you an orange jumpsuit. There's a lot of ornamental stuff down here, metal, things like this. Is all the graffiti done legally? Yeah, I mean, yes, especially on these buildings. I mean, I think, maybe, I don't know. Some of these are conscri uh, cons um, conscriptions, no. What is that called, commissions? Yeah, a lot of these are commissions. So for example, obviously all this stuff is done legally, right? You know, we got Albert Einstein here. So this is all done legally. This is kind of just weird. I'm just gonna say it. Las Vegas now has one of the worst crime rates. I didn't know that. Depends where those stats come from. You can cook stats. I'm surprised they haven't cooked them to look better than that. That's a very interesting statistic. I have outdoor metal plants from the place up here on the corner. Yes, I'll show you those in a minute. Where are the galleries with actual paintings hung by famous painters? Uh, the Bellagio has a gallery of fine art in it, um, and that's one such place. There's some uh, well, famous painters, not a lot. Vegas has been devoid of a serious art scene for a while, and I don't think we've ever had one. One of the things that Steve Wynn did when he built the Bellagio was he brought in five, you know, five-star restaurants from uh, Michelin star chefs that would have never set foot in Vegas. And he also brought in luxury retail from brands that have never been here before. And so that was a big thing. And he also brought in the Bellagio Gallery of Fine Art. And they've had Picassos and things such as this hanging on the walls. But you don't see a lot of gal galleries like you would in, you know, big cities like Metropolitan Museum of Art in I'm sure they have one of those it's the same name New York Los Angeles and those places will just get the artists on loan because they're big population centers so they'll pay money to get a Picasso a Da Vinci Van Gogh Jackson Pollock's these things and 
they know that they can charge money for admissions. So this is the ornamental. Now this used to be Rick's Restorations, I think over here for a long time and then the Rick's moved. That was a show, of course, you might've seen. So a lot of ornamental artwork. It's kind of early. I don't imagine they're open right now. Look at this Spider-Man. That is some bad ass slick artwork. There you go. Spidey. I mean, what do these cost? <laughs> An arm and a leg, man. Somebody had to make this. That's the thing about being a creator. You put a value on your work and you hope you'll find the market for it. You know? I put a value on my YouTube channel. I haven't found a market for it yet. So maybe someday, if I put enough good vibes and good love out there, you guys will, you know, I'll, I'll be able to live off this. But you imagine if you're a person who makes, you know, the dinosaur, the dinosaur from the, from the Sinclair gas pump, and he's even got ornamental iron leaves in its mouth. How long does this person take to make this? How is it actually constructed? There's no doubt in the world that they're using a crane and a skeleton inside to keep this thing all pieced together. And then they take probably months and months to make something like this. So, and you take a look at this and then you think, well, what's, what's three months of your life worth to you? Well, if you're in Nevada, you have to make $111,000 to own a house, right? So just do this, we'll work backwards. What's 111,000 divided by 12? Right, so it's $9,250. So do you charge $27,000 for that piece? Probably want to. Will the market allow you to get away with that? Most likely it won't. So look at the intricacies of this piece right here. Not the motorcyclist. I'm talking about this Velociraptor. Some cool stuff, man. Yep. Yep. It's kind of neat, right? Artist corner out here. I mean, this has so many pieces of metal that are welded into place. How long did that take you? So we got the arts district down here. Let's walk a little bit further. We'll go around backwards. Have you subscribed to the channel yet? I see a lot of viewers, but not a lot of chats, which doesn't necessarily make it a bad thing. Sometimes our chats are hot and heavy. I know how to make them hot and heavy, but I won't disrespect you by dropping little political arms into the chat that seem innocuous, but blow some of your brains up on both sides of the spectrum. So if you're new here, why don't you tell me and subscribe to the channel. This is what we call Sundays with Steven. We go off the strip and show you stuff that's unique to Vegas, quirky, things that you don't think you'd ever see. The fact that there's a 24 hour tire shop, literally just right outside the casinos, stuff like that ironworks place. We also do regular uploads. By the way, this is me. You'll see me on my regular uploads. And uh, we do regular uploads once a week. We make short films. We do analysis of the city. We tell you how it really is in Vegas. There's downtown. Lance Taylor, see, I'm the ambassador of the Arts District here. This is a famous gym called Johnny Tuco's Gym. Tuco's, Tuco's. And uh, yeah, it's just like one of these really old Vegas style places. It's still open, believe it or not. One of the original OG murals down here. <laughs> and I don't even know if these are supposed to be particular people. However, I guess yes. That looks like it's Mike Tyson. And uh, maybe that's Johnny himself. Who knows if he's still around with us. So that was supposed to be Money Mayweather with Party Time. Somebody wrote Party Time on his teeth. <laughs> Why do we spell Tayo different than in the UK? Part of it is uh, I was reading about the fact that there's such a thing called, um, there's an American English, of course, then there's the Queen's English, there's the, like like UK English. Like, for example, Canadians spell color with a U, C-O-L-O-U-R. So do Brits. Uh, English folks will spell center, C-E-N-T-R-E, so will Canadians, so are Australians. And it's Z instead of Z at the end of the alphabet. Part of that goes back to Merriam-Webster. Merriam-Webster, when he was making his dictionary, he was hell-bent on differentiating America from England. So if you publish the only dictionary in America, you get to make the rules for how things are spelled. And so he would spell tire, T-I-R-E, or he would spell color, C-O-L-O-R. 
and that just kind of stuck. It just kind of stuck as to how people would smell them throughout the years. See that I have subscribed. Thank you, Bruce Lewis. Appreciate you. This is called Silicon Valley, like IT and software areas. Crime stats by a neighborhood scout. It's a large real estate and investment data consolidator. So hopefully that explains why we spell things differently. Same with metric system, only in America. Mm, well, there's another country that uses miles per hour. Oh, somebody's honking. Oh, hi. Hi, guys. Nice to see you. Well, hopefully they pull over. You can say hi to me proper. I, I heard somebody honking. I thought they were honking because I was like walking too slowly across the road. Um, so yeah, the Canadians will use a combination less. I've heard the younger pups in Canada are starting to use less and less of the American system, but if you ask a Canadian what they weigh, they'll say they're 200 pounds in most cases. If you ask them what apples cost at the grocery store, they'll tell you it's $1.99 a pound. They don't tell you the kilogram, but that's because the grocery stores know that if apples are $2 a pound, then they're $4.50 a kilogram or so, and they'd rather not sell them by the kilogram because it sounds more expensive than if they sell you by the pound, but they're the exact same rates. Also, America is worth more, where most of the commerce with Canada happens. So since America uses the imperial system, most Canadians in business use the imperial system as well because you just go with the leader in that case. So the arts district is down here. Let's go down Casino Center, Center Boulevard around the back a little bit. We've already went that way on a stream a few weeks back. So we'll go to the back end of this stuff right here. My plan today, I think it's gonna to be to go around to, you know what, actually, I just thought of the plan. The plan is, I just thought of a Kanye West song in my head. The plan is to drink, in, to drink until the pain's over, but what's worse, the pain or the hangover. Anyways, uh, <laughs> let's go back and walk around the, loop back around the back end of all the casinos this way on, um, if we can get down to, Paradise. I don't know if Paradise goes all the way. I don't think it does, actually. We'll figure it out. Somebody wants to know about Trump and somebody wants to know about Gavin Newsom. Well, President Trump was the President of the United States from 2016 to 2020. Gavin Newsom is the Governor of California. There. I mentioned those people. Now y'all can be angry. There's an escape room here. <laughs> and there's a, a cannabis dispensary with some nice artwork on the side here called Roots, uh, Harvest Roots, I think it's called. Harvest Roots Dispensary. They actually talked to these people. I tried to sell them advertising at my day job. Really nice folks. They're owned by a giant conglomerate that owns a ton of dispensaries across the United States of America. So they invest in these things. This guy just screamed at me. He didn't want to go around me. Man, if you're going to ride an e-scooter, please try to be courteous. I love e-scooters, but don't run me over. So yeah, there's a lot of these big companies on these dispensaries. Yeah. The more you know, really. <laughs> and Joe Biden is the current president. See? I mentioned three names and didn't make anybody angry. So that's fun. So let's see, how do we get all the way down there? Because if we go this way, it goes to fourth, then we'd have to end up on Maryland Parkway. Well, I don't think that's the way to go. But if we do walk this way, we'll get to Las Vegas Boulevard, and then we can go to Sahara, and then we can loop around to the West Gate. So that'll be the plan of attack right now. So this is downtown, porn stores and stuff, of course. There you go. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe. If you guys want to throw us some support, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it right now. We might push past 800 people watching. That would be great. Other ways to support can be found right here. And now leaving lasvegas.com forward slash donate. You can find my photography, all my different links and stuff like that. So thank you guys so much. So yeah, we're gonna go to Las Vegas Boulevard, which is just up the road a little bit from us. 
Then we'll link back down on the strip. Check out the north end of the strip. See what's happening, see if it's been waking up. A lot of empty space right here. Someday they'll build something someday. Let's see here, Circa is the best because of no children, no homeless and no criminals. Yeah, you gotta do an ID check when you go into Circa. Not to say that there's no criminals in Circa, but you know, you'd have to have a pretty darn good fake ID because they do scan your ID on the back and look at the front to make sure they match up. I'm sure there are fake IDs that can do that, but I don't know about those. Hmm. So Brian says that he feels like Vegas is a little less spread out than Phoenix. Vegas is a pretty big city, but I've only been to Phoenix for a few days once and I can't say which one's bigger. Maybe my comments can tell me which one's bigger. Is, is Phoenix more spread out and bigger than Vegas? There's more people in Phoenix. There's hotter temperatures in Phoenix. That's what I know about Phoenix. Did I eat? No, I didn't eat. Generally don't eat on these streams. Woke up at 6.45 today. Made the title card for this video. Got my butt out, drove all the way down, parked the car, took a really cool photo of the strip. That was this photo here. Where is it now? I took this picture here of the strip this morning from the parking garage at the Sahara, doctored it up. That's the uh, abandoned site of a giant, huge development that they were trying to make for a basketball stadium. Never happened. JB says that Phoenix is four times the size. How many people are in Phoenix? I don't know, there's 2.29 million people in Vegas metropolitan area. Not sure about the population, but also size. Size can mean driving from one edge to the city. Size can mean the amount of people in the city, of course. 7-Eleven, the uh, Walgreens here somehow managed to close. And also the Wells Fargo out here. What's up? I'm doing a live stream, I can't, hey, my phone doesn't work right now, sorry. He wanted to know if he could make a call on my phone. Yeah, so here's why I don't do that. I really try to help people, but I don't do that call on my phone thing because I don't know who they're calling. And my concern is they might be calling a bad guy. And if that bad guy ever gets caught and his phone gets searched through, then the cops are gonna be showing up at my door asking me why I'm calling the bad guy. And I have no proof that it was not me talking on the phone to the bad guy because there's a log in the phone and that's it. Oh shit, these, oh, sorry to curse. These homeless guys are thrown down. Whoa. Oh man, I think I missed that. The homeless guy on the ground just got punched out. Whoa, he's laid out now. <laughs> My goodness, it's getting frosty. So I think what I'm gonna do is cross the street so I don't have to be near the guy who just laid out the other guy. Good morning to Stephen and Sweet Caroline. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> but see then, it's like Phoenix is a bigger city, but then I challenge you to go to a random person go to 10 random people in a random country around the world and ask them what do you know about do you know what Phoenix Arizona is it's a good chance most of them might say no but they know what Vegas is <coughs> Phoenix is the fifth largest city in the United States cool yeah we're just gonna go this way but I don't want to hang out with the guys that are throwing fisticuffs out there. So this lady's like, to, to hell with the light, I'm going across. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. She just yelled fentanyl at me. What in the devil is going on on this live stream? <laughs> Shh. 
cute. I'm walking past her and she's going, you got fentanyl. No, I don't have fentanyl. There's some homeless folks here laid out. Damn, son, what the hell? By the way, there's the big casinos of the Strip. You never know what you're gonna see in Vegas. That guy's still on the ground. They're fighting like uh, my cats are fighting, man. So when you have cats, they fight by, one of them will back themselves into a corner and get real low down and kind of lay on their back. And that's when you know the pecking order before I turn. Oh man. See, did you hear that? that? That pole right there, you see that? So that, that giant pole right there with the blinking blue light that says, uh, this monitor, this property is being monitored 24 seven by Walgreens Security Services. Walgreens is gone, but it used to be right here. So they have these like things that make you feel like you're walking in a police state and they're telling you, this one, don't, don't do anything stupid. We're watching you even though we're not here. This guy can't even stand up, dude. Look at him, he's like, he's like wavering. He can't even stand. Oh man. He needs help, dude. Jeez. That one guy there, he just like knocked him out. Mama said, knock you out. Hey, I'm gonna knock you out. Yeah, that's the king of that little clan right there. That's the head of the line. My goodness. <laughs> so here's how comments work, okay? We have Joshua Travel Adventures. He has a channel. You can go comment on this video if you want after this. So there's a YouTube channel here called Josh Will Travel Adventure something. What's his full channel name? Let me see if I can find it. So we're gonna pick that comment. Josh Will Travel Adventure Scope. And Josh said, Stephen live streaming and complaining about being on camera. Ironic. So my main question is, when did I do that? It's just a question. I don't think that I complained honestly, uh, about being on camera. I just said it's interesting that they have that camera system set up. But guys and gals, just so you know, people will say anything. They'll hear it their way. You can say something and people will totally take it the other way. Maybe they just don't like you, so they're looking in fault and everything. If you've ever been in a relationship that went south, you might know how that feels. Uh, yeah, we do live in a police state, Josh. Let me explain that to you. We live in a complete police state, okay? We do. So the strip is mic'd up from head to toe. Fremont Street has these informational signs that you'll see when you're on Fremont Street Experience that are digital signs, but they're actually recording devices. Those recording devices can take people and listen to them talking and then your voice print is unique to you and they can feed that into a federal database if they're looking for a really bad person. The Strip has thousands of cameras everywhere you go. Oftentimes they're 4K cameras, but they're actually displaying a 1080 resolution so you can punch in twice and get details like a person's driver's license number. Yeah, we live in a police state. Um, that's just the reality of the world. If you don't wanna live in a police state, it's real hard. You gotta go to a, a country side estate somewhere and live in a house and never do commerce. You can't even get on the internet. You should use a VPN on the internet. So yeah, we do live in a police state, but I wasn't complaining about it. I was stating a fact. There's facts, right? When I say it is very hot today in Vegas, I'm not complaining. I'm telling you the fact. It is not hot today in Vegas, by the way. It's <laughs> not bad. Now's the time you ask me about the weather. It is 58 degrees according to my watch. It will be 85 later on this week. So there you go. So we're walking down the north end of the strip. We're going to loop around and go back to the, um, the Westgate area. See how that looks down there. Scottsdale is pretty cool. I love Scottsdale. We went to Scottsdale a couple of years back. It was during the pandemic, but Arizona had no mask requirement and Nevada did. It was nice to see people living their regular lives. <laughs> they do a Freddy Krueger weddings here. Look at this. There you go. Freddy Krueger wedding. Oh man. So this is where they show you 
all the all the kind of these guys are this wedding chapel is known for these gimmicky weddings which is fun elvis weddings for example godfather weddings so if you ever wanted to have a themed wedding these guys probably have a package for you with different actors that are ordained that can marry you it's kind of funny right call our wedding planners today tell them what you want so this is that one hotel that still is into these things big time so yeah that's cool so if you're ever looking for that that's out here could i go to where the p words are well i mean that's on uh west tropicana just off the strip so we can cover that on one of the sundays with stevens be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already so that's some good stuff look they have weddings where a casket comes up isn't that weird how are you really setting aside your future when your wedding has Grim Reaper wedding, <laughs> the original Grim Reaper weddings? Are you saying something about your opinion on weddings if you have a Grim Reaper one? Interesting. We're walking down on the north end of the strip, tattoo parlors, youth hostels. That building right there is a Sin City, I call them a youth hostel, I don't know. I stayed at a Hostels of America in Vancouver about 25 years ago. That was kind of cool, cheap. Met a guy, talked a lot. He was an American. We talked a lot about uh, the differences between the United States and Canada. We got drag brunch parties here at the Thunderbird Hotel. One of the original signs on the strip lives on down here, which is pretty cool. This place appears like it just explicitly caters to the LGBTQ community from all these signages. So if that's your community, then you got a place for you here. It's good. So get tickets now. I don't know if the show's running, but $35 for burlesque. If you've never been to a burlesque show, they can be really fun. They can be really fun. We, were a few, we went to a few in Mexico. wedding nightmares oh we're not gonna go inside there they're closed everything's closed this morning you can see though they have a pretty nice little balcony looks like they might do karaoke out here because they have the flat platform there's a live camera i'm walking yeah tropicana from the east looks far more dangerous in this area it can be uh it's right across from the airport but then you get to unlv and it's a really nice area we're at unlv so we have an adult bookstore <laughs> like one of the last ones really this close to the strip there used to be a lot more of this stuff billy idol wedding i don't know i think if you just get with billy idol's people and offer him 50 dollars, he'll do the white wedding for you just kidding he's a millionaire this is the original little white vegas wedding chapel so out here you have pink elvis presley cadillacs and Elvis will drive you down the strip. This is so old school Vegas, it's not even funny. They have several of these cars. I've seen them around town. You can see it right here. There's your pink, your pink Cadillac, Elvis. This place was famous. This place was on Fox News. This place has been on the Travel Channel. I think the lady that owns it passed away last year. But uh, yeah, this is Prince Money. Joan Collins got married here, huh? I don't know who Michael, Michael Jordan, oh, I thought I said Michael Corden. <laughs> Michael Jordan got married to Joan Collins, right here. Not really, two separate weddings. Look at all the dead land over here. Like, when are they gonna develop all this stuff? Yeah, the talk of the town, what are they talking about? <laughs> when you go in that bookstore, what are you talking about? How is that even an industry anymore with the internet and in everybody's palm of everybody's hand giving them access to smut 24 seven? The travel guy that commented on my police state comment. Well, good, maybe he's got great content. He might have fantastic content. I don't know, I can't view his channel right now. But I like to sometimes, not. I'm not trying to call people out. But I want you guys to understand the psychology. So maybe you, and, and, and I'm not telling you I'm right in my, in my thoughts. Like, but the psychology of what's happening in the world right now is that you say a thing, it goes through a person's filter, and then they change the words somehow. 
and then they come back and say that you said a thing that you didn't say. And I find it's better to correct that because if I don't correct it, then it's going to leave me looking terrible to people who didn't hear the original comment. But I don't correct it in a way that's defensive or argumentative. I just explain my position and reaffirm it again. 100, 804 people watching. Guys, we're walking down the north end of the strip today. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel. We're racing to 72,000. We're trying to get that, that silver play button at 100,000 someday. And we do regular uploads once a week. We do live streams on Friday for the big touristy stuff that you want to see. We do these candid walks. Just you, me, and a couple hundred people where you can ask me questions and I'll show you stuff on Sunday mornings that you've never seen before. And it's a perfect time of the year. But we're gonna do them throughout the summer. That's our schedule, all right? We do have extra stuff for channel members and Patreon. There are ways to contribute if you guys love, love what I'm doing and you respect and appreciate the time. You can find ways to contribute at notleavinglasvegas.com forward slash donate. I do photography that I sell. I have Patreon. I have all sorts of things. You can do PayPal or Cash App there. So thank you guys for watching. Let's get going. Allison is a subscriber and a Patreon. Allison, go check Patreon. We put up a 16 minute long video of a place off the strip that's only seven minutes away by car. 20 minutes by bus if you wait for the bus. Somebody pointed out in the comment, they're like, it's 20 minutes away on the bus. Like, no, it's not. That's if you're waiting for the bus schedule. But it's uh, an amazing place where you guys can get all sorts of weird, unique foods from all over the world. Call it International Market. I posted that on channel members as well. So maybe you guys want to help us out there. And you get more content than anybody else that way. Adam is here. Cool. Uh, so let's see here. The Golden Eagle 99 is having a conversation about me. The Streets series. I like the Streets series, actually. That sounds good. I was going to call it Sundays with Steven, but I think the Streets series is a much better marketing term. Oh, that is some cool stuff. So we got Coolsville. I swear to you, that's what it's called. Coolsville. It's next to Trash Town. This is Trash Town. It's up by Coolsville. This is where people just throw all their trash out their window for no reason. It's such a shame. But uh, yeah, what's up with this? Come on, man. This is the world famous Las Vegas Strip. Come on, you gotta get your game going. Clean all that up. Do you know how valuable this property must be? It's crazy. Gold Rush. Coolsville, Daddy. Oh, look at that old art here. My Art Aguilar. This has been around 14 years, this mural. It's before these spray paint murals were big in Vegas. How do you get back to the car? Do I ride share? No, I walk. I plan my start and my stop is where I started. My stop is where I started. And my start is where I stop. So we have Coolsville. Whoa. There you go. Coolsville. This is a neat pink building, is it not? Are you able to make a decent living at the casinos? Absolutely. Not at first, baby, but, and by the way, Canadians, this is not what you think it is, Canada. Canadians will tell you, this is not the same place. Although it's open, I've always wanted to eat here. Wow, this is an old school pizza parlor. Look at this, dude. This is kind of slick. Hmm, they got some gaming in here so you can smoke in this place. The long, I guess, is, oh my gosh. Oh, wifey, I was just telling them about our mural project. My wife is here. Oh, man. Football, spring football's going on. So what do we got here on the menu? Create your own pizza. This is incredibly affordable for up and down. You want to get pizza in Vegas. Look at that. It starts at $14.99 and $2 a topping. You can get a, a three-topping pizza for $21 at Boston Pizza here. Three cheese calzones, pasta dinners. So that's fun. So there it is. <clears throat> yep, we're back. Can we see the mural up close? Wonder who his artist was. Well, yeah, we can go and take a look at the murals up close as we're walking past them. So Caroline's been on me to do a mural video for a very long time and 
Yesterday, I texted out to my friend Black57. He's a mural artist, and we uh, chatted, and we're gonna be doing some work down at Downtown Alley. And then, if you guys are subscribed to the channel, you wanna subscribe because we're gonna be running a contest based on that mural. So, once every 60 days, it's gonna be a contest. I'm gonna do a $50 Amazon card drawing uh, every 50 days for that. So this is that mural here. So this is the mural. You can see it's so old that unfortunately this wood is coming out. Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin. So this is like the Sands sign. There's a famous monument in front of the Sands. Yeah, nice place. Food is well priced. It looks good. I, I, I would say that, part, that place is probably a smash hit. Whoa, $5 from Wesley D. Wesley D did a $5 donation to notleavinglasvegas.com forward slash donate. I like the style of this mural though. It's pretty slick. It's timeless and from a distance it looks really great. We got the ghost of Elvis Presley here. So this mural is by Art Aguilar. What a convenient name. I wonder if Art is still in town. This is from 2010. Boston is a favorite of me and my wife whenever we visit Vegas. Very cool. Let's get rolling up the strip. This place across the street, <laughs> the Traveler's Motel. I've seen people moving in and out of here. I, I think it's a hotel room uh, and it's just a weird curiosity that this place even exists. I guess proximity to everything. The Sands, Dunes, and Stardust, three of the first four casinos in Vegas. Could be, maybe. Uh, let me think if I can go in chronological order though. Uh, what do you got? You got downtown, you got the El Cortez. Uh, you have the Hotel Nevada that became, became the Sal Savage. Sal, I guess, Sal Savage, yeah, I think it is. Las Vegas Hotel spelled backwards. I think downtown predates the Strip, for sure. But yeah, the Sands, Dunes, and Stardust, those are some of the original properties. That, of course, predated by that was like the El Rancho, and then the 1946 is when the Flamingo opened on December 26, 1946. The Golden Gate. Yep, that's now called the Golden Gate. Good catch. I got the smartest people on the YouTubes here. So those are the 1950s era hotels, you know. But, of course, there was people out here as late as 1905. 1905 is when the city became a city. So this is like a burned out shell of a building. He wants to invest, huh? Finish this off. It looks like they're doing a ton of work on this. So I think this will probably be finished relatively. Oh my gosh, don't even. Okay, thank God that guy is wearing pants. I really thought for a minute he was pantsless. My video nuked. What's peppermint hippo? <laughs> <So> <laughs> Uh, we went past this earlier, so this is the old Olympic Gardens. Of course, the old Olympic Gardens, uh, I was telling you guys a story about the owner. They thought he was doing the SE blank trafficking, and he probably was, I don't know, who knows. Allegedly, right, allegedly. But uh, they couldn't get him on anything. This is the Olympic Gardens, it's been on the strip forever, it's since the 1960s, 70s maybe. And then this place closed because they put him in prison, they got him in prison by finding his girlfriend and threatening her with prison. And then they got him on tax charges called RICO charges. And so then it reopened as a peppermint hippo. And what's funny about that is that I'm, I'm nearly positive South Park named this something like that. Cause they had like the same goofy naming scheme for the fictitious place in their TV show. So we were down on this way before we're going back this way, walk down Main Street. Trying to walk a little bit slower. As I mentioned to you guys earlier, the wife and I were watching some YouTube stream stuff last night on the TV. And I said, darn, I do walk fast. And she said, yeah, people can't see the details if you walk too quickly. So I'm trying to get there faster if I take it slow, like the Beach Boys sang in Kokomo. This reminds me of Prince of Orlando, Florida with some of the outlying entertainment areas. Like I drive, yeah. If you go down to Orlando, it's International Drive, and if you go off a block or two, kind of looks oldish. Oldish? That's okay. The content is raw and pretty. 
rather watch this than some scripted fake and phony mainstream media any day of the week, even on Sunday. God bless you and the wife. Never surrender, bet on yourself. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. What's up, Pat? Can I help you? Can you help me out? What do you need? I think one guy's tired. Oh, that sucks. Oh, I'm sad. He's nervous. so fucked up right now. Oh, man. The back tire is broken, huh? Yeah, I need, like, I, I got, like, three bucks. Like, How much does it cost to fix a back tire like that? I don't, I don't need the rim. I just need a tire and a tube, and it's, like, probably... Uh. 12 bucks for the two. It's I don't. Like, I don't carry a lot of money. Yeah, right. probably, it's probably like 15 bucks total. So and you got. I got. And you got three. I got three. Yeah. Man, that sucks. Uh, How is it riding the bike in the in the summer? Is it hot? No, it's good riding. It's all I got. I give you what I got. I have a lot. Okay. Thanks. Be good. I hope your I hope your heel feels better, bro. I'm sorry. You yeah. Want, I mean, do you have any water or anything? Yeah, I got a doctor up to the river. Well, listen, I don't have, I don't have like the COVID or nothing. You want this? It's water. Yeah, of course. You got to drink water. It's going to be warm today, okay? Thank you. Be good. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Man, that tire looked gnarly. Oh, goodness gracious. So, yeah, uh, behind here, there's some really old looking buildings, too. Now I got to buy water. I'll do that at the end of this trip. So we're on Oki right now. We're on Oki right now. Hey guys, if I had a brother or a father or an uncle in your hometown and he had a messed up bike and he was showing you the, the tire is messed up, look at it, it's broken. And he told you a legit price, $15. Okay, I, I will hope you would help him too, if it was a family member of mine. Anyways, that's just my take on it. So this place here called Lug Love It Frozen Custard. You know what's funny? I haven't seen this place ever. So Mindy Kaling, she's like this, uh, I mean, like you might like Mindy Kaling. She played the girl off The Office, uh, uh, Kelly Kapoor. And it, a bunch of years ago, she, uh, she got into trouble because uh, she, she put some hate on this place. She went to this custard shop. Here. Whoa, Champagne Sumo, $20. Thank you so much, Champagne Sumo. I missed your chat, I am so sorry. Champagne Sumo sent us 20 bucks, super chat. Says, thank you, uh, loving your kindness. Thank you, Champagne. So she went down to this place and then she was hating on this area. She's like, I went to this custard shop and it's like in the most dangerous, dirty part of town. And then she just got slammed on what was Twitter at the time. Why are you doing that? This place here has been around for about 40 years. 40 years, like it's bad enough that they're not at a hotel property. Look how big their parking lot is. You can always tell if a place is popular if they have a really big parking lot because everybody wants to come there. So that's cool. Bags in the rear. Thank you so much in the rear. Bags in the rear. Man, did I just butcher your name in a very unfortunate way. But I don't see a reason if you are a celebrity with millions of followers to come out and slam it. That's just me. And to, to, to do it to a particular business, that's irresponsible. Not cool. City liquor. Oh, man. Well, I don't know, guys. Okay, then I got scammed and I'm a stupid idiot. But I just felt it was the right thing to do. I'll stick to my guns. It's Sunday anyways. I kind of have this policy on Sunday to try to help somebody at least once. So who knows? Look at all these old houses out here, man. Some funky stuff. This area is kind of weird. What I'm trying to do is get back behind the West Gate right now. So there you go. So we've got a neighborhood watch community. <laughs> you can watch your stuff go away if you leave it outside. That's what the neighborhood watch is down here. <laughs> but then over here, it's really nice. What's up, Brenda Murphy? How you doing, young lady? My Irish connection is in the house. Very cool. So we're down right behind downtown in the stratosphere, kind of, sort of. And I don't even know where I'm going. I know that if you go back here, these, hotels, these houses get really nice. This is the old historic Huntridge area. We have a friend whose name is Oli. I hope he hasn't gone up to heaven yet, but uh, he was Liberace's personal chef. Liberace was out here in Vegas all them years ago. So he would uh, 
cook all of his meals and make sure he was getting whoa 15 dollars from george l george l sent us 15 bucks to our paypal there's ways to contribute at notleavinglasvegas.com forward slash donate on your screen thank you george l that is super slick of you oh what in the heavens go out of here don't be on me ladybug ladybug where are you at i got a ladybug on me you know ladybugs will pee on you and it stings oh it's gone now okay <laughs> Uh, do, do, do. Neighborhood watch here, known as lookouts. <laughs> the lookouts, look at the cops. That's your neighborhood watch. That's the second cop car we saw driving here in the last five minutes going into these complexes, quite, quite truthfully. Bob Stupak's house is back here. If you don't know that, we talked about Bob before. He actually had Vegas World Casino where the stratosphere is right now. And then that place mysteriously burned to the ground and his insurance money mysteriously helped him build the stratosphere. So there's that. I'm not saying, just saying, you know? Oh man, this is weird. Little row housing, track housing out here. The ladybug brings blessings, is that right? Around my house, they say that if your hands are itchy, then you get blessings on money. I don't know if that's true. I haven't had itchy hands in a while, so hopefully one day I'll get it and it won't just be psoriasis. I don't know where I'm going. I, I'm, I'm walking way off the grid. I don't know if I can get, to, let's not go to Paradise Road. These houses are really nice, but that's not what you came here for. So let's get back into the right now as we walk across here. Some of these places are just beautiful, gorgeous little houses that are about 60, 70, 50, 60, 70 years old. Some of these properties, nice day and nonetheless, absolutely. First time I've ever seeing you on a live video, it won't be the last. Thank you, Ruben, appreciate you. Try to talk to the audience the best we can out here. Man, this guy's got so many freaking birds. Look at this, wow. Beautiful houses out here, but then you got this place. What's, that's weird. What is going on with this? There is like a little Riviera sign here. That is the R from the Riviera, almost identically. Strange stuff, man. How much are those typical houses? Well, if we want to have somebody from the Zillow search team that we've employed, uh, this is called Beverly Green, established 1951. This is a very old neighborhood. So what is 51? 73 years old. So if we want to have the Zillow search team kick in, this property is 544OP. So it can Zillow search. You guys want to, who's going to Zillow search it? 544 Oki. O A K E Y. 544 Oki. O A K E Y Boulevard, Las Vegas. So tell me what that's worth. Yeah, I see why that streamer said what she said. It's the truth. I don't know. Do you think this looks dumpy? I don't know. Does this look sketchy? Because we're just a uh, toss, stones toss away. She wasn't a streamer. She was a bona fide A-list celebrity. So I don't think this is a dirty area. I think that uh, doing that just hurts the family business. So apparently this looks sketchy to you guys. <laughs> Big Iron from Saskatchewan, Canada. Watch every one of your streams, enjoy them all. I just don't ever come and say hello. Really enjoying today's live. Thank you so much. House set off the market. I know, but it has a it has a value. So it doesn't matter if it's off the market. It'll give you what's called a Zestimate, a Zillow Estimate. So I just need to know the Zillow Estimate of that property. So if somebody wants to give me the Zillow Estimate, that would be good. Actually, this is called the Rexford. This looks like a lot, like anybody in SoCal, anybody who's in Southern California is gonna tell me, this looks a lot like what you have in Southern California with these places that are guard gated with the keys and you open up and everybody lives around a pool inside. 523, okay, 523. So that, these little houses out here are about a half a million dollar range. Uh, and you guys say it's sketchy and that's your opinion. I don't think this is that bad. Definitely not as bad as what we've seen in the last few weeks out here. <clears throat> so 
but I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, it's just a weird neighborhood. And the cops really like this part over here for some reason. And I'm walking. So it seems like the sketch ends right about here. So we're walking on the north end of the strip if you're just joining us. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. It costs you zero dollars. You get our, what was the name? Oh man, somebody said a really good name for these walks. It was better than Sundays with Steven. <laughs> strolls through the city or city strolls, something like that. And uh, you get these on Sunday. On Fridays we do regular touristy type stuff. And then on midweek, typically Thursdays, but last week it was Tuesday. Uh, because of the Tropicana closing, we upload a regular static upload video. <clears throat> you guys must be used to living in low-class areas. That is not sketchy. Ooh, my goodness, Tommy J, come out swinging. That's very true. This <laughs> is a lot worse uh, all over the world. <laughs> but there's the love of frozen custard we were talking about. Cruising Vegas with Craig. Yeah, hi, I'm Craig. See, there's another cop car, though. That doesn't help reinforce my point that it's not that bad over here. <laughs> it does not help one bit. And this giant, huge 15 foot tall fence doesn't help either. Oh, Mr. Classic TV, I haven't seen you in a while. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you for the $2.17 super chat. So we have three values for these Oki houses. One says 376, one said 526, and one said around the fours. So I don't know if you're all looking at the exact same address as I put in, I don't remember it. Uh, sorry about that. You know, we have an eclipse coming up. We do not have a total eclipse here. We have a 40% eclipse in Vegas. So there's that. So we're coming back to which you guys would know is the strip. This old place here closed last year. It was kind of a big deal when it did. There was a... This diner was out here, it's moved. White Cross Market. This was a historical spot and then it closed during COVID and it just kind of interrupted the business flow in there because they were just like, yep, we're closing. The only grocery store in the entire place is gone. There's nothing on this end anymore. We'll sell it to somebody. Zach says, I don't think that house was worth half a million. I know, but it's, you know, it's kind of worth whatever people say it's worth. And that's kind of how the markets work, you know? If somebody doesn't think it's worth that, it's worth something else. Who knows? Here's a curiosity, and I, I just want to point this out, and I've noticed this now three times, and you haven't seen it, okay? It's very strange. I don't know if it's a drug thing. This is a Q-tip box. Yes, there's a little New Amsterdam vodka in there. But <clears throat> I've seen three of those now. Three of those on our walk in the last two hours. I don't know why I saw three empty Q-tip boxes. So what my mind is gonna lead me to believe is that possibly that's something to do with drug paraphernalia. I'm not sure, I'm not, a, I'm not versed in that. But why would I see three of those strewn about empty? Is there somebody who really has dirty ears? I don't think so. It's kind of strange. That's weird though. Three of those on this walk, not a coincidence. Completely empty, like all the Q-tips have been taken out. Do you know how long it takes? Look at this limo stopping for me, thank you. It's like, do you know how long it takes to go through that many Q-tips? A long time. So there might be, must be something else at play that I don't know about. Andy says, thanks for the Sunday walk. Interesting to see Sunday morning. Come back next weekend. Andy, we're going to have another Sunday walk. We do walks on Sundays. We've gotten over 800 a few times on the stream. If you're just new to us, be sure to subscribe. We do things a little bit differently out here on the channel. Let's take another look at this place. This is the Oyo Hotel. Yeah. Seriously. For reals. Oyo Hotel. <laughs> wow. 
I'll show you in the rooms because there's a few of them that are open, but I don't know if anybody's checked out or what. There's a maintenance guy on this one. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's what you get when you stay at the Oyo on the north end of the strip. Huh. Well, House of House of ACC showed us a lot of knowledge of. I don't know because I can't back it up. I'll just take his word for it. He says it's used for cleaning out drug paraphernalia and sorting out impurities. Yuck. Well, now we know. Why are there so many cars here? Oh, this is the IHOP. That's why. IHOP. You would have eaten at the IHOP. That was closed. It's a little further up the strip. This is the IHOP. That is the new building here. Filter H before injection. So there, I thought there was something about it. So we got an H problem on the on the north end of the Las Vegas Strip. <laughs> Did you guys see the hotel room at the Oyo? There was a maintenance guy in there, so I put my camera on real quiet. Real quiet. <laughs> Did you guys see it? You saw it, right? <laughs> I don't know, man. I guess that's one of those places you go and you just got a low budget and you're like, screw it, as long as I put a chair underneath the door, like in the old movies, probably no one's gonna bang my door down. Huh. Like, I wonder why, um, it just must be that they don't want to sell this place. You know, culinary. This is where the culinary union works out of. Think about what the value of this place could be. They could build any number of stuff out here, St. Louis Square. It's called that because it's on St. Louis Street. Atomic Golf's across the street. It's the newest thing in Vegas. When all the hotels in Vegas sell out, this place will sell out too. They might have, yeah, if JB might be right. That's the crazy part. And people will pay three hundred dollars a night during Super Bowl for that room that I just showed you. Think about that for a minute. And it comes with free bed bugs and hairs. I don't know if that's true. Any hotel can get bed bugs. Did we walk by Gold and Silver? Are oh, they open? It's still open. We didn't walk by it this time. We were there two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Yeah, so the Oyo is just a chain of hotels. If you had a hotel and you wanted to have access to a, a booking system and a website, you don't want to make the capital investment. Uh, you could participate in a franchise opportunity with the Oyo. And uh, that means if somebody knows the Oyo brand, because it's a big brand in India, the country of India, they might type in Las Vegas and find your hotel, because it says Oyo on the front. And then they, you know, they put the reservation in, you pay them a fee, portion of the commission, that's a very popular thing in hotels. So yeah. Weird day on the strip today. Oh shoot! Wow, I didn't watch my step. I just fell. Wow. I didn't watch myself. I was walking down here and I didn't watch myself and I clunked. You probably didn't see it because of the gimbal. Wow is that. Almost Wait. took a face plant. That would have been embarrassing. All these people watching me, these guys are commenting on it. <laughs> Goofy doofy Steven, not the Oyo, same Oyo. No, not at all. So we got the stratosphere over here. This is America. As Childish Gambino once said. I know speculators will buy fixer uppers, it's quite profitable. Oh yeah. I imagine so. Yeah, it seemed like it would be a great area to buy in, buy low, fix it up, sell high. Yeah. Makes total sense. I'm waiting across the street here. I don't like to walk. Do you know that IHOP is a glorified Waffle House? And why would they need a security guard uh, at the IHOP? parking lot. What's the deal with that? I mean, it's not even at night. I can see it at nighttime. Uh, uh, yeah, but I mean, 
it says a lot about the area. They just want to make sure it's safe. Maybe they have homeless folks that are storming in trying to wash up in the bathrooms. That happens. Uh, you are not live stream on Twitch. No, I am not live stream on Twitch. I have never been able to figure it out. I have a Twitch account. I could do it from my phone. But what category do I put myself in? Twitch is for gaming. And so when I went to Twitch one day and I tried to sort that out, I couldn't figure out how the heck to actually get myself listed on Twitch where my stream would end up. People want to live close to their work. Maybe sometime go to the two casino supply stores behind you. They're full of memorabilia. Yeah, they would. Uh, we've been to the Gambler's General store. We also went to Casino Quest last Friday. That's over at the uh, Fashion Show Mall somewhere. Right there. They do IRL streams. Oh, I guess they have categories. I mean, it was like a year and a half, two years ago when I looked at the Twitch. But the reality is I don't have an audience on Twitch. Nobody knows me there, so might have two people watching me the whole time maybe someone left an ipad in their car and people were smashing their car and i see what you did there i see what you did there doing a FaceTime, getting the Twitch on. <laughs> we almost near the pawn shop on TV, forget the name. No, we're walking in the opposite direction of Golden Silver Pond. That's closer towards downtown. We do so many streams, we don't hit it every single time. Twitch trolls will complain you're not gambling. They might, that's okay. Everybody has a different flavor. What's up, Eric? Eric Knudsen? Knudsen? Say it one way, I say it the other way. I know I'll get it right eventually. There's a cool arch down here. Gotta love it. Stratosphere is over here. Let's see if we can find, you can see the spot actually. If you take a look here, it's hard to see, but See how it's perf see how this is perfectly straight until it's not and then right there see that right there where my finger is that's where the the incorrect pour of the stratosphere so you can see there and there so they poured it wrong when they were building it and engineer read something wrong so you're going into fountain blue nope gamble is just here over christmas time that's cool we got the bus stop for the Deuce bus over here. Why does America build huge vertical buildings? But every every country builds huge vertical buildings. Thanks for watching, Ox Coffee. You're new here. Uh, I'll talk to you for a minute. I would say that most most countries build vertical buildings. I'd also argue that there's more vertical buildings in more countries than there is in America. So in most places you have large skyscrapers where people live and they don't have uh, as many homeless uh, affordable housing problems. But every city has them. Tokyo, Japan is incredibly vertical. Mexico City, Manila, Philippines, Moscow, Russia, London, England, they all have giant vertical skyscrapers. So I would say that it's not an America thing. This is the stratosphere tower. It's the tallest observation. This is the tallest observation tower west of the Mississippi River. It's 110 stories tall, or I don't even know what that comes out to. A thousand feet. It's about a thousand feet tall, this building, which I don't know what that is for you guys. Hold on. What's a thousand feet in meters? So it's 305 meters, it's 304.8. I'm just rounding it up to 305 meters tall. So I'll give you an idea. Let's see here. There you go. Nice up there. It's cheaper to build vertical than it is horizontal. That's true. So this is the original plan, somebody had already mentioned it, but when the stratosphere 
buildings do this, this is common, they had to get clearance. So originally what happened was the stratosphere was supposed to be the largest LED, LED, not LCD, not what we have now, not the 4K displays. We're talking in the 90s when things were just getting to be digitized in Vegas. So this was going to be the largest LED on a sign on the entire strip sell some advertising you know get people to the hotel and uh, the city rejected it they said no way to him it was not going to happen bob stupak on the sign right there so then he said well how about a freestanding observation tower and they said yes to that so they came up with the idea they got the there's a there's a, several different people several different <laughs> groups several di several different committees that have to okay these buildings I'm going to rest my legs for a moment. So one of them was the, the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration. They have to say yes to a building. And the other one was actually the United States Air Force. So we have uh, the Air Force in Nellis Air Force Base about 10 miles from here. So they gave clearance to the height of the building where it sits today. But right after they got the approval for this building, they came out and asked for even more. And they wanted to make it taller than the CN Tower up in Canada, in Toronto. And of course they said no. There's another weird thing about this is that there are amusement park rides on the top of this if you don't know. Oh, my gimbal just went weird. Hold on. Sorry guys, drunk gimbal time. There are amusement park rides on the top of this and they wanted to have a giant inverter that ran down to the side of the building, down that arch, and came this way up, and then would shoot back up this way. And that was something that never happened. That would have radically changed the neighborhood around it because it would have needed a bunch of track. So it would have been very interesting to see that get pulled off. I wish I would have something like this next to the arch gateway in the west in St. Louis. It would be so cool. Nevada is a much like a giant military operation. Actually, most of what you see in Vegas is here because of military people moving here and uh, coming in and doing the atomic testing out at the Nevada test site, a couple hundred miles out of town. And uh, a lot of the stuff, you don't know the stories behind it. This is a really nice area right now. They've been doing a good job at bringing it back to life. What about the casino across the street? Which casino is that? That was the Stratosphere. There's no other casinos directly near us. Next one up is, of course, the Sahara. This used to be Orca. They had a, the Orca, Japanese, Vietnamese, Korean, I can't remember. Look at how nice this place is, like for real. This is what can be done because this place used to be kind of burnt out and not very nice. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here, by the way. I want you guys to subscribe. Got 821 amazing people watching. Got the pool. This is a really neat little area on the north end. Oh, the Aztec Casino. We went into the Aztec. It's literally, you can show the Aztec by going like this with your camera. It's that small inside. They have some really good food offers over there. We showed that about two hours ago. So there you go turn it into an air traffic control tower building. Sure, why not? Be a good idea. So there's the Boulevard Boutique Apartments. Actually quite nice in though there. Yeah. I think the north end of the strip has a lot of potential. They just need to... Oh, wait, hold on. Oh man, I'm trying to read this comment. I just need to give it a push. I mean, yeah, Fountain Blue is trying to do that right now. But I think it's just crippled by foot traffic and the fact that it's so out of the way. Why is there happy birthday playing? I don't know if that comes out on the, you can hear that. Weird. Circle K. Yes, sir. Gas here is 429. It's actually a lot better than it is south of the strip. 
you don't like the gas prices, just drive one more mile and it'll change. Fun city, baby. Shoot a machine gun, get married. Whoa, there's some classic trucks over there on a Sunday. Any souvenir shops? Yeah, we just passed one actually. Uh, this one, literally. So, <laughs> that's interesting. So you got the world's largest gift shop. And this one is actually uh, the world's smallest gift shop. International boutique since 1976. Souvenirs, t-shirts, fashions, bags, luggage, swimwear, mugs, tumblers, shot glasses, smoke shop accessories, hats, magnets, keychains, toiletries, convenience items. Open seven days a week from 10 a.m. till nine. It's 11 in the morning. This is the world's smallest. Hi. World's smallest gift shop. I love it. Very cool. Man, I didn't even know this was here. Somebody was asking me where it is. Where's the, where's the gift shop? I just passed it. See, that's cool. It used cool. to be next door. It used to be next door. Nice. So how long have you been in this location for? About a year. How's it going for you? Is it good? Nowhere near as close as over there. No, it's better over there? Yeah. Oh, man. I'm sorry to hear that. 85% more customers. Really? Yeah. One building Dang. over, it's bizarre, right? Oh man, is it that bad when you just walk one block? I don't know. It's not even a block, it's those, not even. That, 200 that, feet. that white building right there. 200 yeah. feet, that building right there. Yeah. My goodness. Oh. Did you, you've been advertising it? Well, the plan is we're gonna get a sandwich board and start selling ramen and soda. So. You gotta put a card slapper out front handing out coupons or something. They'll drive traffic right in. I got, I'm making uh, art for the noodle business, so I have a little Oh, one okay. penny four by four. Each. Is that the is that the place next door that we just passed? Or here. noodle? You have a noodle business. We're gonna we're gonna do ramen noodles. We're gonna do ramen on this wall. And then just a water heater. Wow. What's your name? Lauren. Lauren. I'm Steven. I got a YouTube channel. See. Yeah. So seven hundred thirty-four people. Yeah. Maybe someone will come in here. Yeah. Well, I'm doing a live stream, so it's pretty funny. We're You're live streaming right now. Wow. Where are you live streaming at? My Facebook. Oh, hi, Facebook. <laughs> How you doing? I got a YouTube channel too. Yeah. There you go. My YouTube's not doing that good. But... What's your YouTube channel? I don't know. You don't I, know? I, I made it in like high school, but I don't know. Oh, well, okay. But how you doing on Facebook? I don't know. The Philippines likes it. I don't have a lot of American followers. Why is the Philippines all into it? My so, wife's from the Philippines. I, I'm in, I went to the Philippines on 90 Day Fiance. Oh, you did? Yeah. So you're on TV? Yeah, not yet. So. When does that air? June. June? Yeah. Yo, dude, did you mention this place? No, I wasn't supposed to. Oh, see, that's how they always get you. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I saw advertising with uh, from My Vegas Magazine. And we had one client, and they were on a show that was on HGTV. They were so mad because they wouldn't allow them to put the business. They were a staging company. Yeah. And there was this entertainers moving in. So we're going to stage the entertainers home. They spent 15000 of their own money to get on that show. Yeah. Didn't get one drop in business because they weren't allowed to advertise themselves. Makes no sense. Oh man, if you offer them a hundred grand, they might have let you. Yeah. That's well, cool. they advertise my other business, my other? other my other job. So I have three jobs. My other, my third job is to I help with drag shows. Okay. So they film me at the drag show, so that was pretty cool. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. Which drag shows? Is that the one up the road there? I all over the place. His name's Derek Daniels, but yeah, there's there's Queens. I've done Queens a few times. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So how's your Facebook doing? You got a million followers in the Philippines, but the Philippines is asleep right now. I know they are. My wife's from there. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird that you got Filipino. Do you know somebody in the shop or maybe you? you the, the shop owns the Philippines. This is my personal Facebook. It's okay. just all the people I know are in the Philippines. All my American friends are like, I don't care about you. Dude, like, you could oh. hire them for $5 or $10 I'm doing noodle art. I'm having them take pictures of themselves eating noodles. Oh, that's awesome. So. You do good. Yeah. So your name again is Lauren, you said? Lauren. Lauren, yeah. okay. 90 Day Fiance. Airs in June. Mm -hmm. That's a, probably all I can say without getting in trouble. I don't right want now. you to get in trouble. <laughs> what's, the, what's the best thing they can buy out of your shop, Lauren? Right now we got the 4 for 10 t-shirts, but we don't have smalls for whatever reason. Okay. We can get them. Yeah. I'm not sure about that. Have you been to the Philippines? Yeah. Where'd you go? Um, Manila and Bye Bye Leyte. Bye Leyte, okay. Yeah. So you stay in the central islands there. Yeah, we're, we got family in the south of the Philippines. Okay. So that's fun stuff, Dabao. man. You said it. You got it. There you go. <laughs> Dabao. That's cool, yeah. man. Well, that's awesome, dude. How much is your waters here? You want a three, a five, a seven, or a ten? Oh, yeah. That's okay. It's too rich for my boy. But you're the man, dog. That's better than the casino prices, guys. So that is still yeah. better than casino prices. A little rich for me today. For sure. Uh, all right, man. Well, you good luck. And, uh, you Have know. Fun out there. Yeah. So how they find your Facebook? What's it called? Which is Lauren Allen. Oh, just Lauren Allen. It's me. 
Yeah. Okay. Man, why did the owner stream this place? They could pay for some ads? Well, they have to make their own account first. I said, they can do it. I, have, I This is my computer, my webcam. Yeah. Because they asked me to do it. And I'm like, if you guys make your own account. Yeah. Because right now the website is all in Spanish. And I don't understand why, because the lady's from the Philippines. So yeah. I don't know why it's in Spanish. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> you should call me. I can help you with this stuff. You want to yeah. take, my, take my number down? I'll help you. I'm not going to charge you nothing. Okay, send me a text. Yeah. Help me with it, but it's not even my shop. It's... Well, does it benefit you? I mean, I guess so. I, I might know. get paid if I yeah. make more money. Because I don't usually get paid right away. What? They're not we paying don't, you right away? We don't make enough money. Wait, you're on performance pay at this shop? No, no, no. I'm on like, on like a... almost commission. So they have, I have back pay. You have back pay? Yeah, but... Yeah. When does that come? When she gets this loan to start the noodles. Oh, okay. <laughs> Man, oh man, you got a lot going on. Right? I'm a busy guy. You are. I gotta save up money to move to the Philippines, right? Yeah. Why don't you send me a text? I won't, I'll see it when I'm done. So, Make it happen. You know how to, yeah. how to type on a phone? No, man. It's my Could first you day. you imagine? It's my first day. <laughs> you hand the phone to someone, they set up your little, little Osmo and your, your webcam, and they say, okay, go, go, go. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, they say, hey, you want to try this out? I said, sure. Yeah. And then on the first day, I got 72,000 subscribers. It's crazy. Could you imagine? <laughs> no, I've been doing this for five years to get yeah, that. Yeah, I bet, I bet. Yeah, so six zero zero. I okay. might do a few live streams on YouTube, but I don't know yet. Yeah, YouTube's are, is good, man. That's you have to have a professional account to do it on Instagram, because I made an Instagram, and I can't stand it, but I was like, I'll just try and use the webcam, but apparently you can't do it on the computer without a professional account. Well, I'll tell you, your core audience is on YouTube right now. Yeah. My demographics are that most people are watching my channel are over 40, and that's this area. Right. They want the old school cool, so that's where well, you guys want to be. Well, one of my plans from. was we go to Goodwill, we find the old t-shirts for Las Vegas, and yes. we just... We get a printer and we just slap the word something new on there. We yeah, yeah. Sell it. That's what they do down there. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they're doing down there. Yeah. I got like a Nintendo 64 when it said Las Vegas on the right. Why not? I don't know. I mean, that was like that's something. Up to the owners, right? Just use better fonts. All right, Lauren, we got to roll. See you I, soon. Sent, I sent myself a text from your line, so I'll help you yeah. out with stuff if you want, okay? See you, Salamat. Yeah. See you later. So that's the world's smallest gift shop. And that's Lauren, and he's going to be on 60, 90 day fiance. And uh, he gets paid back pay? That's weird. That guy's gonna be super famous in June. You're completely right, surfing. You're gonna sell 25 cent ramen. <coughs> I don't think he's gonna sell 25 cent ramen. I think they're doing gourmet ramen, which is actually a cool idea. This place in Chinatown that does gourmet ramen. Upside down nowhere, man. Yeah, so that guy's gonna be super, he's gonna blow up. That guy's gonna be quitting this place. You gotta, if you spin that right, if you spin it right, you can get brand deals, endorsements, you get your fame, you tell people what you really do, and then boom, you're in it, yo. Okay, there you go. What else we had? We had some comments here. I like his vibe, yeah. Didn't you sell only bottle openers for beers and they would win? <laughs> How much room to wear that nylon? I don't know. CCTV, my wife says, 24 seven, that's true. Um, someone type his name, Lauren, L-O-R-E-N. He went to Philippines, he did, yep. That's fun, man, 90 Day Fiance. Cool, he's gonna be super famous. There you go. He won't need no help. That guy's neat, he's doing multiple things. He's streaming out to his Facebook. He's a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that Lauren is an old techie kind of nerd like me because you know why? He was playing MP3s and he was using Winamp. Winamp is like from 1998, 1997. So he's rocking a 30, 30 plus year old almost uh, MP3 player. That, that shows me that he's got some, he's got some, uh, some drops on the digital stuff. They need not leaving Las Vegas. I don't know about that. But uh, you know, maybe I'll text him. I, I texted him his, my phone from his phone. He might not know that. So that way I have his number in my texts. I don't know why a Philippines website would be in Spanish either, Nacarius. It, it makes no sense. If it's Philippine audience, you want to put it in English. Um, you wouldn't even put it in, Filip in Tagalog or Filipino language because everybody there speaks English anyways. Winamp. <laughs> I can do the Winamp. <laughs> when you start up Winamp, 
I, it might still do it, I don't know. When you first run Winamp for the first time ever, when you install it on your computer, there's this MP3 that plays, and it uses like a radio voice, and it says, Winamp, it really whips the llama's ass. And then you hear a llama go, eh. I know, I know, I'm a nerd. Was there a chirping in there? I didn't even, I didn't even hear it. I was just having a conversation with him. That's cool. I gotta plug my phone in because my battery is at 10% after two hours and 39 minutes. Philippines used to be part of Spain before we took it. This is true. However, they don't speak Spanish in the Philippines. Yep, you're, you're, you're not wrong. Yeah, Philippines used to be part of... Uh, my, my, Spaniards went all around the world. The Philippines used to be a Spanish colony. Then in the 1940s, after Japan destroyed most of Manila and bombed out large portions of the country and put people in the Bataan Death March and things like this, uh, then the Americans helped rebuild it. And I heard a joke, or not a joke, but a riddle about the Philippines. And Fatal says, yes, they speak Spanish in the Philippines. Okay. I heard a joke about the Philippines, and it was... Yeah, there's one little region that's not right. I'm waiting for Caroline to see if she was listening. So there's one region in the southern Philippines, Zamboanga, and they speak Spanish. But there are hundreds of individual unique dialects in the Philippines, hundreds of them. And then there is Tagalog, which is the national language of the Philippines. And then technically, Filipino apparently is a language as well. And English is the de facto language of business and trade in the Philippines. And higher education courses are done in English. Or if you're going to private school for elementary school, it's all done in English. Uh, but yeah, one, one area, Chamorro, is very similar. Not at Chamorro, that's a different thing, I'm an idiot. Um, Chavacano is very similar to Spanish, but even then it's not Spanish, so there's that. Uh, John is arguing me that the whole city, the whole country speaks Spanish. All right, guys, the, all of the Philippines speak Spanish. Okay, moving on from that, uh, all of the whole Philippines speak Spanish business, let's go back towards Sahara and go towards the back end. Okay. That's the way you guys want to roll. I'm not going to sit here and argue you that the entire Philippines speaks Spanish. I mean, I don't know anything about the Philippines. Only been married to a Filipino since 2004 and been there for three, four times. <laughs> what do I know? <laughs> Steven, you're so freaking stupid. You obviously never met a Filipino in your whole life. You certainly never been there. <laughs> you don't send money every single month to support a family. And when you do, and if you do, you're saying, here's muchos pesos. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, John, now you're gonna... <laughs> John's like, okay, shut up. <laughs> uh, you don't owe me a free water. This is America. Wasn't there an indoor roller coaster? There was an outdoor roller coaster here. Yeah, there is an outdoor roller coaster here. It was called Speed. And the plaza right out front had the NASCAR experience. And the Speed was a roller coaster that went under the ground where we're standing right now. And it would come up and it went through a big circle. And then it would go right back down, right back to its base. And so Speed, I heard the track is rusted and old. Uh, you know. And is there a tra chance the track could bend? Not on your life. <laughs> no, I'm quoting a monorail instead of The Simpsons. But anyways. Yeah. So yeah, there was Speed, the NASCAR Cafe. NASCAR Cafe closed. I've been there a few times. Never went on the ride. But it was a big fan favorite with people here in Vegas, that's for sure. People loved it. We can't go in now that we know the rules of the Sahara. The head of security, I kind of walked past him by accident and he asked me nicely what I was doing. And I said, I'm doing a stream. And he said, well, you have to have prior consent. SLS couldn't make it here. Yep. 
SLS was here before the Sahara, and then they rebranded back to the Sahara. So that's some cool stuff, man. Yeah, Sahara's nice. I like the property. I recommend highly that you do check it out because it's beautiful inside. It doesn't look like any 60-year-old building that you've ever been in in your life. They've done a fantastic job with the renovations over here. So you guys are great. Hey, let's talk about if you've subscribed yet, please do so. If you guys want to send me a text message, that says Resorts World. That's not the one I'm looking for. If you guys want to send me a text, you can do so here, 702. 5468107. I am for hire. I will tell you if you have like a website project you need done or you need videography done. I do edit videos. I do websites for people for hire. There will be a dollar sign attached to it. Don't get offended. Uh, if you guys want to go ahead and email me, you can do it here. NLLVcontact at gmail.com. If you guys want to donate to us, you can find ways to, subscribe, uh, to uh, support us at notleavinglasvegas.com forward slash donate. Okay. If you guys donate off stream, I'll still send you a thank you email. You don't have to do it while I'm on the stream, okay? So the monorail has gone bankrupt a few times. Absolutely. And uh, that one will apparently close in five to six years and be decommissioned and shut down, according to Corey over on casino.org. And I emailed Corey and asked him where his source was because I couldn't see anything about it. But he said, uh, nothing back so far. He usually emails me back. So there it is. Man, so that's the Sahara. We've done a nice walk. Two hours and 45 minutes of a walk with you guys today. You guys are fantastic, and I want to thank you guys for being part of my Sundays. Um, appreciate you guys. If you guys want to... Oh, my camera's drifting. Stop drifting, camera, using a different gimbal. If you guys want to uh, connect with us, I give you some options for texting me. I will text you back. If you email me, I will email you back. I get to my texts every day or so. And if you text me in the last few days, you haven't heard back, you'll hear back from me today. Thank you guys for being part of my life today. Me and Caroline, she's on the stream as well. Um, you guys are great. I love y'all. And uh, thanks so much. Stay tuned and subscribe. Next week, we're going to go Sundays with Steven or we're going to do like a street walk. Street walks with Steven, I don't know. And uh, we'll get you guys some more great content. We'll do an upload this week and we'll be uh, back on Friday for a main stream maybe we'll go downtown maybe we'll go down there that's the main las vegas strip all right gotta go you guys are great three two one and i love y'all and be good today and quick